Kiko. She wasn't going for goal, but she'll happily accept it. It's gone all the way through, and look at this! Joinda! Did you dare right past the loader? career of one of the all-time greats is all but over. Nice comeback. Uma oportunidade de dizer alguma coisa que eu que eu acho que nunca disse. NFL Game Pass is now exclusively on the zone. Let's get this thing going. Watch every game, plus the playoffs and Super Bowl. The it's your all-access pass. where tonight the next generation of boxing superstars steps in the ring for overtime boxing as we present OTX5. And we welcome you inside the OTE arena. Hello, everyone. I am Corey Erdman alongside Akin Barak. Pleased to be calling the action for you all night long here from ringside. And uh, fellas, this is your first time calling a fight here from the overtime arena. And uh, I guess you'd have to say it's a much different atmosphere than we're used to here in the boxing business. To say the least. Now, first of all, I can never say that I haven't been to a club in, a long, in years. Because, <laughs> gentlemen, we are in a club right now. There's bottle service, there's tables, there's everything. There's lounges, like, this is ridiculous. Yeah, I, mean, I love it. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't believe I'm here. Corey, you had way too much fun last summer in August at OTX. So many people raved about it, but it didn't know justice. Being here is where you see the real innovation, the creativity, the vibe. I like to think it's what the game's been missing, and I'm excited to join the team. Well, we're going to have a lot of fun here tonight as well because we have a terrific card coming your way as we take a look at tonight's contest, which will begin in just a few moments with the former national amateur champion, Dante Lane, who will be back in action as he takes on Deshaun Mitchell of Mississippi. The U.S. Olympian O'Shea Jones will run it back with Sonia Dryling, whom she faced in her pro debut. They'll do it again here tonight over eight rounds. The national Golden Gloves champion and son of Raul Marquez, Giovanni Marquez, takes on former world title challenger Jason Velez, who steps in on just six days' notice. And then it's the big boys. The Mack truck to carry Scott will take on Teddy Webster. Six rounds in the heavyweight division. 
In our co-feature, a battle of unbeatens as Haven Brady Jr. takes on Waldemar Carrill of Puerto Rico, the second consecutive undefeated fighter that Haven Brady has faced here in Atlanta. And in our main event, one of the breakout stars of the first season of overtime boxing, Elijah Pierce, will take on Arthur Villanueva, eight rounds in the 122 pound division. So a terrific card coming your way. Uh, Barack, let's focus on that co-feature for a moment. I know it's a fight that you're particularly looking forward to with Haven Brady and Waldemar Carrill. Again, because Haven Brady is at the stage in his career where he doesn't have to be taking these types of tough tests, but again, here he is, second consecutive undefeated fighter that he's faced here in this venue. Uh, first, I want to say hello to the newest member of the broadcast, the Corey Mustache. <laughs> You're looking good, brother. Yes, back to boxing. Um, I love that fight because it's the battle of the undefeateds, but what I realize is that, you know, not every undefeated record is created equal, and that's just the case. I think Haven Brady and his team think that we got undefeated beating undefeated fighters. You beat guys that are subpar, and that's the confidence he's coming in with. Now, Kirill, on the other hand, is like, he's coming in with the anxiety any undefeated fighter comes in with, and that's, I don't want to go home without my O, so that's his confidence. Let's talk about our main event then between Elijah Pierce and Arthur Villanueva. Elijah Pierce, you know, you talked about some of the anxieties the guys are facing in our co-feature. Elijah Pierce is putting the pressure on himself, Ock, because this is a man who has been making some lofty promises, and uh, he's been getting busy on social media as well. Oh, my God. You, you've been on the rock if you haven't seen the footage of Elijah Spong with Javante Tank Davis. Now, he claims he was 17 years old, but still holding his own, but he's making promises to your point talking about first round knockout. Look, I like to pull first uh, round predictions out of fighters, but rarely do they say the first round. That puts so much pressure on yourself. You, you don't want to go on there the first round and gas out. You have to get your distance, make sure you land a shot, and jump on it if the opportunity comes. You don't want that to bite you in the back later on in the fight, so we'll see. We're looking forward to that main event coming up a little bit later on. We mentioned how different it feels in here. We're alluding to the innovations of overtime boxing. And for more on that, let's welcome in the fourth member of our broadcast team, Alia Orozco, who will tell us more about Thank year you. two. Thank you. Wow, the vibes in here tonight are amazing. I am so excited for tonight's fights, and I will be here to give you guys all the post-fight interviews in the ring. But first, let's take a look at year two and what to expect tonight. Starting with the overtime rules, there will be KO bonuses. If a fighter gets a knockout at any point in the fight, they get a bonus. But here's the catch. The first and the last round serve as the money rounds, where fighters can receive a more lucrative bonus. And lastly, we have the overtime round. In case a fight ends in a draw, the overtime round will be added. The final round will determine the winner. All of this is meant to produce more action for you, the fans. Now let's toss to the last member on our broadcast team, Overtime Tom. Thank you, Aaliyah. And I am down here with Giovanni Marquez. We're getting ready for the fight. My man, how are you doing so far? Doing good, chilling, just calm, relaxed, focused right now, getting dialed in. Yeah, the, uh, the punches feel a little weak, though. What's going on with that? <laughs> Now, tell me a little about camp. What did you guys focus on to get ready for this one? Uh, we just focus on, you know, everything. Defense, offense, staying sharp on the defense, being calm in the ring. Ooh, ooh I wasn't ready you know, for that one. I wasn't sitting, ready for that sitting one. on the shots like that. <laughs> yep. Now, is that, I feel like you got a little bit more in the tank, though, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. We're just, you know, warming up a light. Okay. And we touch them, touch them like this. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're pretty quick. You're pretty quick. Yeah. I can give one back. You know that. Yeah, too, yeah. Too, right? yeah. Um, now, what do uh, what do you think about your opponent? Tell me uh, about my it. opponent, you know, he's a veteran. He's been in there with a lot of top guys. You know, he's battle tested, but he has a young, hungry lion that's coming for him. Yep. And he's coming to make a statement. Yep. Now, we're looking for the C4 fight of the night potentially. Give me a little uh, prediction. What do you think is going to happen? Knockout. Knockout for sure. When, when Come in, explosive. Could be the first round, could be the second round. That's for you guys to see. Don't blink. I'm coming in. I feel that. I feel that. I feel that. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Okay. Whoa. Hey, you were amazing. I want everyone to vote for you. C4, fight of the night tonight. Yes, sir. If anyone wants to vote, the people at, at home, C4, the energy that hits. Yep. Check out Overtime Boxing's Instagram, OTX. You're going to be able to vote for that. Give me one more punch so people vote for you, all right? Ah. Hey! Ah. All right. That, I said one. All right. Good ah. luck, my man. Good thank luck. You, good luck. You, Back to you guys you. in the booth. <laughs> 
So Giovanni Marquez promising that he'll cash one of those KO bonuses. One man who did just that last season on Overtime Boxing is Dante Lane, who will be in our opening contest against Deshaun Mitchell. Let's take a closer look at Dante Lane. My goal is to look good, to feel good, and to knock him out. I come to this fight, everybody wants to see another knockout. They want to see another first round knockout. They actually want to see it in a quicker time than the last fight. And down he goes, and he is out. My boxing style is my own. It's clockwork. Very precise with my punches, and every punch is not a soft punch. My jab alone is going to take this fight my way. I don't want to let nobody down, especially myself. This is all I do. This is my life. From the first bell to the last, expect a fantastic performance. You're going to hear my name cheering. Dante! Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for our opening contest. Dante Lane and Deshaun Mitchell. See Dante Lane with a one inch height and reach advantage. Perhaps more importantly, a significant advantage when it comes to formal schooling in boxing. Dante Lane, a decorated amateur. Deshaun Mitchell, a man who came up through the backyard boxing ranks. So he's looking for a brawl here tonight. And with that, let's introduce our MC for this evening, Mr. Lupe Contreras. Kicking off the action, four round super middleweights, making his ring wall, Deshaun Mitchell.
fighting out of Independence, Mississippi, Deshaun, Sean Mitchell. Across the ring, the red corner. Wearing black with silver trim, he weighed in at the super middleweight limit of 168 pounds. Tonight, this 2022 National Golden Gloves champion now enters the OTX ring, an undefeated professional with one victory. That victory coming by way of KO. Haley from Elmont, New York. Dante! Make sure you obey my commands. We will have a clean fight. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. Come out fighting. We are set to go for our opening contest. Four rounds in the super middleweight division. Dante Lane taking on Deshaun Mitchell. Two young undefeated fighters. Dante Lane, a multi-time national amateur champion who is very much on the Olympic path. Had the 165 pounds weight class been included in the 2024 Olympics, he was forecasted to be going to the games. Oh, 100%. The thing, definitely the most experienced. You can see that already. The pedigree is a little bit different. But the thing about Deshaun and fighters like him, they're very dangerous because they're unorthodox. They're wild. And sometimes that mixed with power, they're the most dangerous kind of fighter. Well, you're seeing that right now. He saw a nice overhand right by Deshaun Mitchell. But Lane gets that shot back with a hard left hand. Very true, Barack. I mean, hard to train for a guy that doesn't have boxing pedigree, no amateur background, because you don't know what is coming. But Deshaun looks... Dante looks comfortable in there, even with, with all the unorthodox shots coming his way. Lane's described his style as wanting to punch with authority with everything that he throws. And he's talked about having to get out of some of those amateur habits and really learning how to punch exactly like that. <laughs> beautiful left hand staggers Mitchell in the first round. Wow, beautiful, beautiful time punch. And, and look, uh, uh, I think I think Deshaun is showing a little bit of a little bit of experience by holding on. <laughs> and usually guys who are not experienced don't hold on like that. But he's right. Oh. in serious trouble and down he goes. He never recovered from that first hit to the top of the head. Well, oh, he is struggling to recover from this one. He is back up at the count of nine, but there is an eternity for Dante Lane to work with. It's that New York pedigree, Corey. You better be careful. Oh, Mitchell in trouble. I don't see him getting out of this round, Corey. Can somebody say money round? Still close to 45 seconds for Lane to work with. Can he cash that KO bonus? He's not even experienced enough to hold on. One uppercut and he's out of here. <laughs> he just caught him with it. Oh, was the reference. That'll That's be ruled a knockdown as well. Sean Mitchell, he's going out on his shield. He's going down swinging. But he was outgunned in this one. And Dante Lane is headed straight to the bank. Phenomenal finish in the first round by Dante. Proven that he's on a different level. I see a bright future for this young kid. And also proven that he got NyQuil in his gloves. <laughs> Another explosive knockout victory for the 20-year-old Dante Lane. Repping Rockaway hard. Let's hope the young man Deshaun is okay. Here's a, here's a quick fun fact. 
Dante spars with my son. <laughs> oh, that was that was a shot that hurt him right there. That left hook to the top of the head. That right hook to the top of the head. And he was already on shaky legs. Punching in between shots, dipping shots, uppercut hurt him. I mean, this right is hand a, put him this down. This is a perfect example where athleticism doesn't always play a part in this sport, in this sweet science. All right, looks like we are ready to make this one official. Dante Lane cashing the KO bonus, scoring his second knockout as a professional. Both in the first round. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the OTX ring, referee Nate Mann reaches a count of 10 with an official time of 2 minutes 43 seconds of the opening stanza. Your winner, by way of knockout, still undefeated and taking home the first round KO bonus, Dante! in the firefight that he wanted in that opening round. Again, credit to Deshaun Mitchell for going for it. Frankly, that was his best chance against a guy as well-schooled as Dante Lane. Right. I think Dante Lane trusted in his power, so he knew if he would come at him. All right, and Dante up. is standing by with Alia Roscoe. What an epic knockout that was. How are you feeling after that fight? I feel like I'm glad I, I got it out early, like I said I would did. We just completed the mission at the end of the day. How important was your training camp in preparing you for that fight? Oh, uh, nah, we had fun at this training camp. Great spawn partners, great great sessions. We, everything's about having fun in boxing, so it was never boring. And what would you say was your key to your success in that fight tonight? Um, we knew he was going to come out come out sharp, just come out swinging. Um, we're just taking our time, picking on the inside. The, um, the left uppercut and the hook was really the, um, the dominant side of this fight tonight and that's his order we, we wanted at the end of the day well congratulations and i have to ask you after an epic knockout like that how are you going to be celebrating tonight right now i'm gonna give me some food i'm gonna go celebrate with my family up there they see me they see me up there and and we're gonna be right back at it on wednesday i love it well congratulations again back to you guys thank you so much Aliyah. dante lane obviously very pleased with his victory. Uh, New York City, they're definitely taking over these top rows here as well. Oh, we take over everywhere we go. That's right. Yeah. I mean, New York breeds the best fighters. Let's not be bashful here. Ooh, ooh. I'm, I'm pretty in the Midwest, there. but we, we just take that title anyway. <laughs> well, let's take a look at one of New York's newest prospects, Dante Lane, and his handiwork here in our opening contest. You know, Corey, I, I got a feeling that a lot of guys are going to be shooting for first round knockouts. I mean, this is going to be a trend here at OTX. Perfect timing with that that left uppercut. Another, that left uppercut right hook was the combo that just ended the whole fight. We'll take a look at the final punch stats. I mean, that looked like a, a video game round, basically. Let's see what the numbers look like. And indeed, Dante Lane outlanding Deshaun Mitchell 21 to 6 overall. That being a 33.9% connect percentage. Obviously, the three knockdowns did the trick. Levels, as they say, levels in this game. At a tender age of 20 years old, I'm impressed with what I saw with Dante. So an impressive way to start things off for us here in Hotlanta. Dante Lane with his second knockout victory in this very venue. We have plenty of action still to come here from in Atlanta, Georgia. We'll be back in just a few moments. PFL versus Benetton was just the beginning. Shields and Jake Paul. Plus, witness Francis Ngannou's MMA return. Unbelievable. The six foot eight champ of champs awaits. The zone. Unleash the cage. And we're ready for our next contest in the women's super welterweight division. 
The U.S. Olympian O'Shea Jones will be rematching Sonia Drayling. We saw O'Shea Jones here in Atlanta last season. Uh, let's take a look at the tail of the tape. These two very familiar with one another. See O'Shea Jones, the physical advantages are stark. 5'7 to 5'4, but it's that reach advantage, a 78-inch reach on O'Shea Jones. That is a lot for any fighter to deal with. And these two are going to run it back. Let's take a closer look at both O'Shea Jones and Sonia Drayling. You know, this is something that I wanted the rematch on in the first place. We've already done one fight, me and her. And I always love rematches because I know where I made my mistakes and I know where to come back from. And to actually show her that, hey, you know what? You may have got the first one, but you ain't gonna get the second. I'm not satisfied with unanimous decisions. The winner by way of unanimous decision. Oh, shit! have a lot of power, but then I have a lot of wisdom with it. Then I at OTX5, I'm going to be way more aggressive towards her. I'm going to go for it, but the smart way. I don't ever go back in the same ring as the same person either. Mark my words, going to see action, and you're just going to see a whole nother, you know, develop elite fighter this time. Come prepared, be ready, because if it ain't a knockout, we going all the rounds, ma'am. Be strong out there, Buki, because it's coming. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tornado coming, so be strong. Our next contest, eight rounds, super welterweights. Entering the arena, Sonya Dryling. so much, lost the first three bad knuckle fights, and never lost again. That's who we're dealing with tonight. Not only that, look, a, rec, a professional experience is deceiving. Even though she's only been fighting for four years, she actually has been boxing since eight years old. She took a long way after her father died. Oh, Shay Jones! So that's why I'm going to have to lean over. Make sure my... The O'Shea Jones heads to the ring for the sixth time as a professional. Already tabbed as a future world champion, of course. A U.S. Olympian, an Olympic bronze medalist. One of the fighting prides of Toledo, Ohio. We mentioned that 78-inch reach and O'Shea Jones isn't just a tactician. O'Shea Jones has a real mean streak, and she's been fostering that, of course, in the new gym that she's training at as well. I mean, she, yeah. she spars with men, and some of the best fighters in the world, like Boots Ennis, that's the type of pedigree she's around. I mean, what do you think she's going to come with? That's her sister, Khadijah, walking her out. It's her 30th birthday, so happy birthday to her. All right, we are ready for our second contest. We continue with the, the action here at OTE Arena. It is the return of OTX Friday Night Fights, powered by C4 Energy. This contest, eight rounds. On the line, the vacant IBF International Super Welterweight title. Supervising for the International Boxing Federation, Melvina Lathan. Our judges at ringside are Nola Oliver, Eric Gilbert, and Ed Kanner. In charge of the action referee, Malik Walid. 
Presenting first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. She enters wearing black with maroon trim. She weighed in at an official 152 and one half pounds. Tonight, this multi-disciplined combat sports veteran enters the OTX ring for the 11th time as a pro with a record of six victories against four losses. Two of her victories coming by way of KO. Haley from Greeley, Colorado, and now fighting out of Albertville, Alabama, Sonia, the Red Riley. Across the ring in the red corner, wearing black with silver trim, she weighed in at 153 and one quarter pounds as an amateur. She received the ultimate honor of representing the USA at the Tokyo Olympics, bringing home a bronze medal. And now she enters the OTX ring, an undefeated professional with five victories. One of her victories coming by way of KO, the reigning NABF international champion from Toledo, Ohio. Shay Sugar Jones. Okay, ladies, you know I'm expecting good, clean boxing. When I say break, stop punching, take a full step back. Remember, protect yourselves at all times. Touch them up. Good luck to you both. So we're set for our second contest of the evening. O'Shea Jones, Sonia Drayling, a rematch from Jones's pro debut. So a perfect way for us to assess just how O'Shea has been developing as a professional, getting to run it back with the very person she started her career against. And she says she doesn't want it to go to distance this time. Sharp left hands just like that will certainly help that cause. You can see the difference in the hand speed yeah. automatically. Dryling's a little bit slower. She but she's willing to mix it up and, rough, and try to rough her up. And that's the kind of fight it should be if she's going to expect to win. O'Shea looks so seasoned and so comfortable in there. Good shot there from yes. Drayling. You just like her patent leather skirt. Because you're like wearing all leather. <laughs> We're as, we, day. as we mentioned, Drayling not afraid to get into a scrap here. And seemingly, the goal for Drayling is to try and initiate these exchanges. That might be her best opportunity here. A absolutely. I think her goal should be to keep that left hand up. <laughs> she's getting tapped with that the right hook and the jab. I mean, it's it's clear. Sonia's plan, game plan, is is clear to just overwhelm her, make it, make her feel uncomfortable in there. Seems like Jones is getting into a little rhythm here. I mean, O'Shea. She's showing she can mix it up as well. She's tough in there. Remember, she pushed that at the weigh-in, you know, just trying to size up a little bit. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there's that familiarity in there. She's been in there with her. Good oh. shot there from Jones. That one snaps the head back of Drayling. Nice right hook from the 26-year-old from Toledo, Ohio. O'Shea hasn't found a home for that straight left yet, but I think when it lands, it's going to do damage. I, I think the right hook is landing... And that'll do right it now. for round one. And we saw them going at it here in the opening round. They were also going at it at the weigh-in, guys. Things got a little bit heated yesterday. You guys were uh, up there close to the stage. What was going on? Well, I, I think it, it wasn't no animosity. What it really was is this O'Shea's like, I want to test her. I want to see where her head's at. I want to see if she's intimidated. Kind of like the Mike Tyson effect. Uh, here we see the footage from the way in and there it is O'Shea Jones getting a little aggressive <sighs> here comes the elbow in the face like get that out all right I'm gonna push you again <laughs> Sonia Sonia wasn't getting upset though I mean she was laughing at it oh yeah yeah, yeah she was smiling through all of it 
She says her faith keeps her humble, you know, and also I think she's like, she's not afraid of anything. Yeah. She has three kids. Oh, there's that straight left. There's that straight left that Bozy was calling for. It's round two underway. Believe it or not, Sonia has 66 amateur fights, 63 and three. So she's been, she's ha she has experience in the ring. Yeah, Drayling won the National Golden Gloves title herself as an amateur. And in addition to the multiple disciplines that she fights in, she also works in a poultry processing plant. She actually completed her supervisor's training while she was training to fight Mary Spencer while she was training at altitude in Colorado. So you want to talk about balancing stuff, Sonia Drayling knows how to do it. She has it together. Well, she's a supervisor. My son needs a job. We're going to talk later. She has three kids to feed, and boxing alone is not going to do it right now. Uh, much respect to people who work jobs and train all day and get in the ring. I like Jones. this work for Jones, though. You know, th this kind of work is going to help her in the long run. It's I not an easy touch, not a soft touch at all. Yeah, but I don't think it has to be this hard for Jones. I think if she listens to what Bozy is telling her, which is shoot the jab out before, and that's going to set up everything. Oh, she got a little cut on her right arm. Well, that's the dog in her. She wants to match Sonia's energy. Good point, good point. Is that blood coming from her right arm, or is it coming from somewhere else? Uh, I think O'Shea's it's coming right from arm. the face of Sonia Drayling yes. from, from somewhere. I think so. <laughs> and it's the body work from O'Shea Jones I tell you what, that's setting though, up these shots. Corey, that, that, that O'Shea's put in work, but it, it, it's not slowing Sonia down. Sonia is continuing to move forward, even with the shots Hard that left hand there that, from that, O'Shea Jones. That one staggered Drayling. Oh. Look at Jones go, putting these oh. shots together. Oh, my God. Oh my Wow. I'm surprised the referee didn't stop that. But you know what? Almost that whole time, Dryling had a smile on her face. <laughs> That's the kind of warrior she is. She's indeed a warrior. Oh, this is just a barrage of punches by O'Shea. Sitting down on the left hook and the right hook. Every punch landing. Wow. Incredible. I didn't, what did I tell you about the smile on Dryling's face? And when the round ended, she stood there for a second like, I'm still here. Yeah. I'll be back the next round. Right. But sometimes you got to save a fighter for themselves, from themselves. You know, I've seen her take this punishment and bare knuckle boxing. So she could take it. That doesn't mean she needs to take it. I don't think we're at that point yet where she needs to save, be saved from herself. She got a little left in the tank. <laughs> in her face, you mean. We well, got to hand it to the corner of Sonia Drayling. They've managed to do some good work here. Drayling looking pretty fresh <laughs> after surviving an absolute vicious onslaught from O'Shea Jones. And if Jones could put another one of those together, guys, you'd have to think that the official is going to have a very close look at this one. Absolutely. <laughs> no question about it. But, but what's 10-ounce gloves when you're used to taking bare knuckles to the face? <laughs> well, obviously, it did some damage. <laughs> I love the dog in O'Shea. Like oh, yeah. She is going forward. I like it, the body work, the body attack. Beautiful right hook up top there from Jones. Right, right. Sitting down on all her punches. I, I think if she if she continues to throw that right hook to the body, she's going to start slowing Sonia's attack down quick. This, this round, Corey, might not go past. This fight might not go past this round. If O'Shea keeps that energy, this fight ends in this round. I'd love to see a, a left uppercut and from O'Shea. And we see Brady Jr. in his locker room watching this one intently. He is very close with O'Shea Jones. They've become inseparable in training camp. And see Haven uh, clearly finding it hard to focus oh. on his own fight right now. <laughs> he has a fight coming up, but he's watching his sister and he's rooting for her. He's at, he's, he almost feels like he's in the fight. I'm sure he's more think, nervous about the fight. I think the referee fight. needs to start looking closely now. Well, how she's can you take your eyes off of this? This is an offensive clinic from O'Shea Jones right now. And this is a clinic in heart and determination from Sonia Drayling as well. Absolutely. The credit has to go two ways right now. But the offense is going only one way. If not the referee, 
Corey, the corner needs to start looking closely if they care about a fighter. She's taking too many right hooks flush to the head. Wow. Drayling manages to survive this round. Beautiful offensive display by O'Shea Jones. I, I think that's the best we've seen right, Varane right. do. Right now, overtime Tom is standing by with Haven Brady, who's still backstage watching this fight. Thank you, fellas. I am down here with Haven Brady. He's got a fight in a little bit, but you're watching your friend O'Shea Jones. First, how do you guys, what's your guys' relationship? How have you known each other? What, what's that? Uh, I've been knowing Shay for like three or four years, and that's like my that's my sister. That's my real sister. I feel like that's my real sister, but I've been knowing her for three years, for sure. And you're locked in now watching her fight, even though you got one coming up in a little bit. What's it like watching her put on a, put on a great performance right now? Uh, she just she just starting everything off, uh, and I'm gonna finish it. So uh, she just giving me a lot of motivation. She looking good right now. I think she gonna stop her. Uh, she killing her with the hooks, but uh, she's starting to show, and I'm gonna finish it. And now you guys trained together leading up to this. What what, what were you guys doing before? this uh yes uh, we've been training together for the last two and a half years and uh we uh do camp together we basically do everything together we go home we, that's, that's my sister and it looks like she's on her way to another win talk to me about her career what this could do to, to propel her especially in otx uh well her being an olympians and uh she 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 got a fast start and um i think she shooting for a world title in the next fight or two so uh that's that gave me a lot of motivation you know as being a boxer that's that's the biggest thing is being a world champion so uh, I think before this year out, for sure, I think she'll be a world champion, so I'm very proud of her. I love it. And your fight's coming up in a little bit. Can I get a quick little prediction for what's uh, what's going to go down when you get in the ring? I Man, it's going to be fireworks. Just keep the phones out, and don't tell me what's going to happen. It's just going to be a great performance. I love it. Haven Brady, rooting on his friend, but also got to fight in a little bit. Back to you guys in the booth. Thank you much, Tom. Looking forward to seeing Haven Brady Jr. a little bit later on in our co-feature. Right now, it is more of the same from O'Shea Jones, who is just putting a pounding on Sonia Drayling. You know, guys, the more I watch O'Shea fight, the more comfortable I am with thinking about her fighting at Clarissa Shields down the line. I know she has ways to go, but the, the season style that she has is going to take her far in the sport. Well, I, I think it's absolutely fair, guys. When you think of who the next generation of potentially dominant champions is in women's boxing, that list has to include O'Shea Jones. He's absolutely. The pedigree, the dimensions, and also this element of her game, which is one that she's talked about wanting to resist, didn't want to bring that dog out all the time because she wanted to stick to the technicalities, to, to being more of a stylist. But right now, she's bringing it out at the right time. Oh, she's showing both sides. And, you know, obviously, a Sapo is rare. I think the only big name in women's boxing is a Sapo is Amanda Serrano. I think she has something unique here. You know, the only thing I'd be worried about with O'Shea is that can she punch herself out against a fighter that can take all of her shots? Well, and I mean, if, if that she happens, had... what does Dryling do after that? Well, that all condition plays a part, Barack. If she's a fighter that is going to be ready to put that onslaught throughout a fight, then yes. Hard body shots and one more right hook right at the bell. O'Shea Jones putting on a clinic right now. Uh, it looks like we have Elijah Pierce and King Arthur Villanueva entering the building, heading down the hallways of the OTE Arena. This live look is presented to you by C4 Energy. Energy that hits. That's our main event coming up a little bit later on. Elijah Pierce really put his name on the map with his victory here in Atlanta last summer. And looks to make another statement. He's been making a lot of statements online. Uh, he could make a physical one here tonight. He looks physically a lot better than he did at the win after the win yesterday. A lot filled, filled out a little bit more. You know, Corey, O'Shea says she's ready for a title fight, her very next fight. Even though this would be as a sixth fight, she's ready. We just had the doctor take a close look at Sonia Drayling. 
Very brief look. <laughs> the doctor was just looking at Dryling, and we heard. We can hear Bozy saying, please stop the fight. Do it again, say. Do it again. Yeah, just like that. Relax. Relax. Do it again. You hear the voice of Bozy Ennis right now. Keep going. Try the body with this straight shot, too. A hard left hand right down the pipe there for Jones. So, Barack, I think she is finding the left hand now, along with the right hook. I don't, I mean, we have three rounds after this left in this fight. I think the crowd is not only listening, and the fans are not only listening to Bozy, but O'Shea's listening to Bozy. Look, Sonia's tough, no doubt about it. But at some point, the referee or her corner needs to start taking a close look and stopping this fight. There we go. And that is it. There we go. Right on time. <laughs> and that is an ethical stoppage. And Sonia Drayling, understandably a warrior, she wants to fight to the finish. But at a certain point, guys, this is not competitive, and this is not safe for the fighter to be taking part in this either. No, but, but she's, I mean, she's a warrior, and she's saying, listen, my nose bleeds all the time. <laughs> I wake up with a nosebleed, it's you know, so she's the, upset. It's not about the nosebleed. It's about the shots that are coming in with no defense at all. Too dangerous. But in, the, in defense of Drayling, as we take a look at the replays, the threshold in her world of bare knuckle boxing is a lot different. You can look a lot worse than that, and the referee will let it go. In Ooh. traditional boxing like this, you're not going to allow that to continue. See, the jab really set everything up before that referee came in, and that jab and that straight left was so precise. The referee had no choice but to just stop that fight. And I'm not mad at that, obviously. It was a one-sided beatdown. Yeah, and you, if you look at O'Shea closely, Barack, she doesn't look gassed out. She's barely breathing. She's in good condition. She could have went another four or five rounds. Bozy's O'Shea's trainer. <laughs> Just confirming. I told you we was gonna stop driving. I got all that blood on that knife so good. Got it. The O'Shea Jones, victorious. In her sixth professional fight and reached the title belt also on the line in this one. And obviously, that means a step up in the rankings for O'Shea Jones. That means speeding up the process towards some of those bigger fights that you were talking about, Ock. Right, since the pool is not so deep in boxing, I don't want to say women's boxing, but since the pool is not so deep, she can get to a title maybe in the next couple of fights. I mean, why a couple of fights? I mean, when you talk about guys that are medalists, these guys are fighting for world titles at one, two, three, and uh -oh, four come fights. On. Go, on, not go O'Shea. Go O'Shea. <laughs> if you ask me, she's ready for a world title right now. Right now. But, but Dag, I, I, don't, I don't know if we're able to say that against Dryling. Maybe she is. I mean, she's sparse, Clarissa It's pedigree, Barack. It's pedigree. She's had a, she's a decorated amateur. She's fought on an international level. And yes, the pool isn't that deep. All right, all right. You, you finally write one time, and you got to rub that in. All right, thank you. Sonia Drayling getting some extra medical attention here. All right, well, as uh, Drayling gets looked at, let's send it back over to Overtime Tom. Hey, thank you, fellas. I am here with D.D. O'Shea Jones' mom. You just watched her absolutely destroy someone. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. All the hard work she's putting in is finally paying off. Now, she, she can throw a punch. Did she learn that from you? Of course. Yes, yes. 
When, when did she first start fighting? When did you realize that this could be a career for her? Well, she started at a young age and accidentally, she accidentally started boxing. Her brother used to box and one day her dad just said strap up, she strapped up and then it was a natural and it came natural for her. I love it, I love it. And now, you know, she's off to a great start with her career. What do you think it, the future holds for O'Shea? Definitely a world championship. Definitely the, a world champion. So we're looking forward to that and bigger things. All right, and you got a big crew of people here. Who, who's here with you guys? Everyone's supporting. Everybody, her whole family, everybody, everybody. All in Toledo, Ohio is here to represent. I love it. I can't wait for you guys to celebrate tonight. Congratulations, Dee Dee. Congratulations to O'Shea Jones. Back to you guys in the booth. You know, speaking of future, right, the Sona drilling at her age with this type of performance, should she continue boxing? I mean, at what level will she get to? Well, we know that she is a force in bare knuckle boxing. She has multiple disciplines she can choose from. But clearly tonight, O'Shea Jones, too much for Sonia the Red tonight. All right, looks like we're ready to make this one official. Let's send it up to Lupe Contreras. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside the OTX ring, an accumulation of punches. Forces referee Malik Walid to call a halt for this contest with an official time of one minute, six seconds of round number five, declaring the winner by way of technical knockout. And now, the IBF International Super Welterweight Champion, O'Shea Sugar! So one of the biggest nights in the pro career of O'Shea Jones, and certainly the most impressive performance, the most impressive offensive performance. That was a highlight reel for O'Shea Jones from start to finish. Yeah, she, she very sharp, very fast, and she shows that she can mix it up just to get some respect from her opponent. But at the end of the day, you listen to a coach, and she got out of there. All right, let's send it up to Aaliyah Orozco. Okay, congratulations, everybody. I champion O'Shea Jones. Congratulations, what a performance that was. I know this was a rematch between you and Sonia. Did the fight go as you were expecting or were there any surprises in your strategy? Um, I thought the fight could have ended the, probably the second round. I was pushing for that. Um, it went about 10 seconds with her throwing no punches, so I just tried multiple times to get her out of there. Well, let me just say, you are the to not only win the fight, but to entertain the fans with your style of boxing. I know you definitely had me entertained on the edge of my seat the whole time. Yeah, um, I like to give, you know, the fans to entertain an action-packed fight. You know, they pay their money, hard-earned money at that. So I just want to have everybody satisfied every time they come watch me. I love that. And O'Shea, you were the first woman boxer out of Ohio to win an Olympic medal, and I believe you are someone we're going to see many historic firsts out of. With that being said, what's next for you following this win, and what is your overall goals in the sport? Um, my overall goal is to be uh, undisputed in any way that I fight. So right now I'm at 154, so I want all the tough, hard opponents. I want to see, you know, I want the, the, better, the better the opponents, the better the challenge, and the better me shows up, you know? Well, congratulations. Thank you for sharing your journey with us. Back to you guys. Thank you so much. And I want to thank everybody for coming out to see me and everything. Toledo, Ohio, we in the building. Hey, congrats. Money, do you think she have, has enough sponsors on her trunks there? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I'm sure she'll be uh, getting more of those after performances <laughs> like that as O'Shea Jones, no doubt, is going to wind up in world title fights in the very near future as we take a look back at her performance here tonight. From, from the first round, the right hook was there. You know, she chose to mix it up, stay in there. And she really tried to get out there in the first round with all these left, hand, left hooks and right hooks. And she was just taking every shot driving. It was just, it was ugly from the first round. I mean, that was the last round. I mean, nothing she was throwing was missing from O'Shea. And the refs just said, that, okay, I've seen enough. Barack, I'd be surprised if any of these champions want to get in the ring with O'Shea. <laughs> <laughs> Big risk. Big risk. Big win for O'Shea Jones. 
we take a look at the final punch stats for uh, Jones and Drayling, and I assume they will be very one-sided. Yes, indeed, you see that. <laughs> 139 to 26, O'Shea Jones outlanding Sonia Drayling. Drayling connecting on just 9.3% of her shots. Got a hand it to Sonia, though, throwing 281 punches. She was in there throwing, just obviously could not keep up and, with O'Shea Jones. And that was their second tonight. fight. It's safe to say that we won't see a trilogy on that one. I, <laughs> I, I would assume so. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. We'll be back with more action from here in Atlanta right after the break. Well, you got to fit 29 hours into a 24-hour day. I know I'm good when that C4 hits. It's go time. with overtime Tom earlier on tonight. Now you're going to see him for real. Giovanni Marquez taking on Jason Velez as we take a look at the tail of the tape. You see Marquez with a one-inch height and reach advantage. Age obviously a factor in this one. Marquez, one of the brightest prospects in the sport right now. Jason Velez, a former world title challenger in the autumn of his career who feels he has at least one more big night left in the tank tonight in Atlanta. Uh. I'm extremely comfortable finding under the bright lights and TV cameras. It gives me an extra excitement, an extra motivation. Some crumble under the pressure, but it just turns me up. I fought for the world title. I have fought in many arenas uh, full of capacity. For me, it's nothing new, so it's just another day of work. It is extremely important for me to put on a show when I'm fighting. I like to give the fans their money's worth, and I like to go out there and perform. People want to see action, and that's what I look to do. I know he's ready. He's undefeated. He's a great fighter. I respect him. When we were on that ring, uh, that respect go away. So nothing personal. I'm young, but I'm hungry, and I'm coming to send him into retirement. Our next contest, six rounds, super lightweights, making his ring walk, Jason Bellis. Well, here comes uh, Jason Velez, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, taking this fight on just six days notice. And indeed, we've seen Velez taking on a whole host of contenders and prospects over the years since he challenged for a world title back in the early 2010s. But still, maybe a little bit surprising for some viewers to see Velez take an opportunity like this on this short notice. Well, he was training for a fight. He had a fight scheduled. So according to him, he's in shape. He was, I think it was maybe March 22nd and he was supposed to fight. So it was a no-brainer for him to take this opportunity. The man is walking in here with so much experience. His is opponent, Giovanni Marquez. You heard Giovanni Marquez just moments ago saying he's ready to send Jason Velez into retirement. And that's part of the bigger theme he's been pushing here, which is the start of a new generation. He feels that he could be the next in line in terms of Mexican superstars in the boxing world, from Oscar to Canelo, he feels that in a couple of years, that particularly with his backing in the Houston region, he could be in that type of conversation. Well, I'll tell you, pedigree is the first thing that comes to mind. I mean, not only his father, but his brothers. He comes from a family of fighters. And you know, Corey, don't say this. We continue with the action here at OTE Arena, Atlanta, Georgia. It is a return of OTX Friday Night Fights. Powered by C4 Energy, this contest. Six rounds or less in the super lightweight division. Our judges are Nola Oliver, Eric Gilbert, and Ed Kanner. In charge of the action, referee Nate Mann. 
Presenting first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. He enters the ring wearing black with gold trim on the scale. He registers an official 142 and one quarter pounds. Tonight, this former world title challenger enters the OTX ring for the 45th time as a pro with 30 victories against 13 losses, one bout even, and 21 of those victories coming by way of KO. Representing Juncos, Puerto Rico, Jason La Maravilla Vélez. Across the ring in the red corner, wearing black with silver trim, he weighed in at 142 and one half pounds. Tonight, this 2021 National Golden Gloves champion enters the OTX ring, an undefeated pro with eight victories. Five of those victories coming by way of KO. It ain't nothing but a G thing from Houston, Texas. Let's go. Giovanni. Gio Marquez. All right, gentlemen, what are the rules in the dressing room? Make sure you obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. We're going to have a clean fight. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. Come out fighting. Corey, you were, were, you were just calling a fight with Raul in Detroit <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. Did he have anything to say about his son? Was he worried? Is he nervous he, at all? No, he said me, that he wants Gio to be sending him into retirement here tonight. And you're right. We were calling a fight on his own last night. We were at the airport at about 3 a.m. together. <laughs> and now here we are in uh, opposite positions here on the broadcast. All right, all right, all right. And uh, Put me to work. <laughs> Raul uh, just doing some uh, custodial duty as well. <laughs> Veteran Jason Velez stepping in on six days notice into this six rounder yeah. against Gio Marquez. And we're also listening right. in to Raul Marquez, who's mic'd up in Gio's corner. That's it. Stop that jab. Keep popping that jab. Keep popping that jab. Stay relaxed. There we go. Sneaky left hook there by Velez. Oh, he has 13 losses. Give him some face. Pop that jab. There we go. Keep popping that jab. Nice. Up and down. Put it in his face. Watch those counters. A couple good check left hooks here from Giovanni Marquez. Hey, Raul, I don't know if you can hear us. Is the strategy here early on to focus on the jab to the body? Yeah, we're trying to establish the jab. Good solid jab, changing it up, back set with the jab. And if he wants to fight in the, in the center, in the end, then give him some of that, but attack from angles. Attack him from angles, Gio. Raul, how worried are you about? Move your, move your head. The experience that Belas brings in. There we go. That's it. Forward. Keep touching. Keep touching. Right hey guys, it's safe to say that Belas is Giovanni's biggest test to date, in spite of his losses. Bump him off, Gio. Bump him off. Don't let him get dirty with you. There we go. Uh -oh. The biggest test, the biggest aim. Nice shot there from Velez. He's been sneaking a couple of left hooks in there. Good right, right, hand right as the well. Good shot there from Velez. Move your head, Gio. That's all right. Get it back. Get it back. Get it back. That's what happens when you abandon the game plan of the coach. And, and that's what. Keep punching like that. Don't get careless. Don't get careless. There we go. That's what Gio did just for a second, you know, trying to bang with Velez. Velez did say in the fighting meetings that he was going to teach this young kid a lesson. Keep working like that. There we go. Be careful. Don't let him surprise you. Don't let him surprise you. Yeah, but I'm just not sure that Velez could, could stay with this kind of pace, even though he's looking good right now. Watch those counters. Yeah, you're dealing with youth and yes. power and speed. Come on, come on, get to work. Again, this is just a six rounder, so perhaps both men. On, nice shot there from Velez. Both men banking on the idea that they can sustain this pace for 18 minutes. Well, come on. As I always say, conditioning plays a major part, so this is when we find out. We put the there we go, there we go. Let's go. Let's go. You can't. Velez has nothing to lose. He will put everything in to this first. That was a. Good slip and, and left hook and right hook.
Another good Another shot left. there from Velez and Another. a right hand over the top. We might need to see a little bit more head movement from Giovanni. Not just that, but the jab. Keep, keep Velez off him. All right, let's listen in to the Marquez corner. Let's see what Raul has to say. You might see a Tito Trinidad father slap. Get, you gotta get busy with the jab. Relax. You lost that round? I think you lost that round. But no pressure. You gotta work inside. Wipe his mouth. How you feel? Okay, let's go. Keep going with the jab. Work the body. Slow shot. Don't back up straight. Yeah. Okay, keep turning. Where's the angle? Yeah. Give me the angle. Loosen up. Let's go. You're good. Do some water. Let's go. Get it back. Don't, don't get crazy. You know, Barack, I'm thinking about what you're saying. And... <laughs> Whack truck. Whack truck. <laughs> This ref doesn't want to drop on the canvas here. <laughs> <laughs> Round two here, Giovanni Marquez and uh, Jason Velez. Ock, you heard something in the Marquez corner that seemed to stand out to you. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I'm talking about Velez. He's given his corner a lot of confidence. You know, they, they know he's fighting a young Savage and Giovanni, but he's sneaking a lot of sneaky left hooks. He's getting on the inside. They're really comfortable right now with Velez's performance. But what I heard in the Marquez corner is that you might have lost that round. I'm being real with you. You lost that round. And I love that because you're going to be real with your fighter and you want him to go in there with an understanding of where he's at in the game. Well, keep in mind, we always talk about that father-son dynamic in the corner. And, and one thing that we always talk about is at a certain point, it reaches a plateau where maybe you can't be as honest with your son as you want to. Raul Marquez was very honest with his son there after the first round. Absolutely. And that's how you should be. I mean, all trainers need to take a a script out of Marquez's training book because oftentimes they're not honest enough with their fighters. See, Marquez has good legs, but he's not using them right now, and that's why he's getting caught with these left hooks. Well, the problem is these young fighters, you know, they it's the ego that plays a part. Once you get hit with a few shots, you want to get your lick back, and sometimes you take risks. Yeah, but you're in there, you're just in there with a veteran right now, you know, and, but you're taking shots you shouldn't take. Marquez told him, his father told him to Stop backing up with your head up, and that's the mistake he's making. Well, as I said earlier, moving his head, I think the jab is important. To your point earlier, Barack, it needs to be upstairs and downstairs, upstairs yeah. and downstairs. Create the right distance before you start throwing those bombs. See Marquez still honing in on that check left hook. There's a nice combination on the inside, and a couple of chopping right hands, okay. and he might have Velez in some trouble. You see Velez grabbing a hold of that arm. Grabbing a hold for the first time in this fight. Youth. Youth. He grabbed the arm that hurt him. It was a left hook. <laughs> I guess he's, he's listening to the instructions now. He's looking comfortable. Getting at the right distance. And j the jab is what does that. Listen, the pressure is on. OTX5 is not disappointing. We just saw two knockouts. So you know what's going through Marquez's head. I got to get this guy out of here. Nice shot again from Marquez. Or maybe he's uh -oh. waiting. Maybe he's, he's waiting for the sixth round bonus. Velez is hurt. Look at his legs. A little shaky, a little stinky leg going on. Yeah, the body language of Velez. Certainly a lot different here in round two than it was in round one. The adjustments paying dividends for Marquez, as you see him now listening to his father, stabbing to the body. Establishing his distance a little bit more than he was in round one, where frankly, it looked like he saw an opponent in Velez who's lost eight of his last ten fights and thought maybe I could blitz him in the opening round. Absolutely. Yeah, well, I tell you what, I think Father Time is starting to show his true colors Ooh. right now. Talking about a guy 36 years old, over 40 fights. He's been in there in a lot of wars. I think Giovanni's starting to get into his, uh, his bag. Well, as we see Giovanni Marquez taking a seat in his corner with his father and trainer Raul Marquez. We caught up with him earlier this week to talk about fighting in the shadow of his world champion dad. I'm not tired of answering the question about fighting in my dad's shadow. It just comes with the territory and it, it gives me more viewership, more exposure. So I just take it as a positive. I expect to make a name for myself just by continuing to be victorious 
And once I win world titles, multiple world titles, is when I'll separate from just being my dad's son. Well, Giovanni Marquez, uh, he's inherited the boxing skill. He's also inherited the gift of gab. Clearly, I mean, he's grown up around the boxing media game as well. And, and that is a part of becoming a star should Marquez continue on the path that he's on right now. Yeah, right. You need the whole package. He has a little sauce. I see the off-white Nike boxing boots. You don't see those often. So style is playing a part. I like his trunks. I don't think style is helping in this <laughs> fight right now. But Look, good point, talking though. style right now, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small component. I like, a star. I like the off-whites. You know, I don't want anyone watching to judge Marquez harshly on this because he is not looking exceptional like he's been looking. It's because this was a last-minute replacement, and this last-minute replacement is a veteran who fought for titles. You know, he, he knows a lot in this game. And this is only Giovanni's ninth professional bout. I think he's going to gain a lot of experience that he's going to use moving forward in his career with this one. Right. And he's going to have a lot of confidence so he can get Velez out of here. Absolutely. Up, we're in round three. Good body shot there from Marquez a moment ago. A beautiful uppercut to the body right along the belt line. And now Marquez starting to put things together. You see Velez now willingly just engaging in those clinches, looking for a reprieve from this kind of action. Uh, absolutely. Look, he's, he's getting his body shots in there. It's just now you're talking about three to one, three to one, four punches to one. He's beating him to the punch. Giovanni is. Switch to the southpaw right there. He needs to be careful, though. He's coming in and dropping that right hand, and Velez has landed the left hook several times. The man with that experience is sneaking. There goes his hand into the left hook from Velez. Veteran trick there. Well, Velez might be looking for a break here and there, but he is more than willing to stand and exchange yeah, with Giovanni Marquez. And frankly, that probably is his best bet, is looking for a shot like that. Yeah, good timing him. That's definitely his only bet. You know, he doesn't have the speed to match with Gio, but he doesn't have the steam on his punches anymore either. Gio's unloading. Turn him, turn him, Gio! Don't pop up, let's go! There we go, sit on him! Feel him out, feel him out, feel him! Feel yourself! That jab up and down. Up and down, as I said earlier. That's it. Let's go. Get in that rhythm. There we go. There we go. Let's go. Give him angles. Come on, Jill. Nah, come on. Let's go. No, but Les had his. More activity. More activity. There we go. Nice jab. Nice jab. Let's go. There we go. Let's go. Jump on him. You got him, Jill. There you go. That one might have staggered for Les. I think Raul Marquez seeing the same thing go, right go. now. Definitely starting to fade. Ten seconds remaining in the round. You do not like how Velez is reacting to some of these shots. No. Velez has no legs. Even okay. right now, trying to turn a corner, Velez's legs are absolutely gone as he staggers to the corner. Yeah, I mean, look, as I said, he had moments early in the fight, landed some left hooks, but the momentum is changing. Obviously, youth, speed, power is playing a part. Uh, I think we're going to get another knockout in this third fight here at OTX. Well, coming up next, we have an Atlanta local, Mack Truck Scott, who will be taking on Teddy Webster, the king, who says he's ready to bring the jungle of Mississippi to the streets of Atlanta. The big guys coming up next, six rounds in the heavyweight division. I'm excited for that one. If I had to take a guess, I would say Giovanni is going for the kill in this round to get him out of there. Round four underway, and the corner of Giovanni Marquez certainly feels like they are on the brink of another knockout victory. Uh, we Where's certainly didn't sides. like how the Open legs of Velez were looking at the end of round three. Up. There we go, set him up. Nice. Be slick, be slick. Entertaining fight we're seeing right now. Everybody in this venue is a great seat. 
in no way is Velez just laying down. <laughs> he's jabbing himself. He's, come on, he's not going come on. out without a fight. Get, get that distance, Jill. Come on. Let's go. Good one, walk him down. Velez. It's time to walk him down. Put him together. There we go. Nice jab. Hop that jab. There we go. Oh, nice jab by Gio. Marquez continues to throw that jab. Punch him back. Punch him back. Punch him back, Gio. He's going to set everything else up. Velez is still coming back strong, Barack. Come on, Gio. As you said. There we go. Nice jab. Guys, you heard the instruction from Raul Marquez. Come on, punching him up back. Punching back. Uppercut. Yes. Given that I know Raul quite well, I yeah. know that that means when you have a fighter who has Walk been right hurt, we'll keep just walking. simply flurry and give the referee an opportunity, a reason to stop Body's the fight. Gio. That's exactly. what he's asking Gio to do exactly. right now. He wants Gio to Three, jump four, on him and right. let the more. hands go. Yeah, the tough part about that is that the come on, let's is go. still firing There back. we go. Except the referee to stop a fight. Keep the fight working, let's go. Back. let's go. Yeah, but he's firing back, but it's different, different level of steam. Nice. It's not let's like the first come round come steam that he had. Keep touching him. Keep touching him, Gio. He's given just Turn enough. Ah, yeah, nice. Let's go. Good. Look at Gio on the left-handed stance. The strong left hook. Good uppercut through back. the middle there from Marquez. Gio is being tested on, in this fight, believe go. it or not, guys. Busy, busy. Get busy in there. Nice. Let's go. I think we need to see more body attacks That's from it. Gio. I think that would finish him off. Here it is. This Hard is it. Left this hand is, there this from Marquez. This may be the moment. Velez in serious trouble. Come on. Velez just trying to grab a hold let's of go, anything go, 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 to stay on his go, feet. Go, 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 go. Better than tactics right there. 40 go, seconds go, left. Go. 40 seconds left. He's looking close here, Corey. Let's go, let's go. Keep Les running, rolls underneath those shots. That may have been the sequence that the referee was looking Jay. for, but Velez, the KG veteran, him, staying go. alive here in the fourth round. That's it, that's it, let's go. Puerto pride is not letting him go. There's no way Gio should be letting him off the hook like that. No way, he should be on him right now. Maybe he's a little winded. All right, let's go. You, you gotta get him out of there, let's go, let's go. This is when he jumped on him the first time. Look at his legs. Look at Valet's legs. Ready to go. A lot of those shots, a lot of those shots missed. But, but he already felt the, the first shot. You can still get the Flush left hook. Double left hook. Right hook today. He's smart. Walk him around. Block. Boom. You see, when he keeps backing up instead of staying on him. And keep touching. And that's what, that's what his father's telling him now. Okay? He said, you got to get him out of there. You finish the combination. Jab, 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 jab. Keep touching. Tough. Boom, boom. At this point, he's tired. He's tired. He's done. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Maybe he should wait another round and get the last round bonus. Got two rounds. He's stuck in there. Come on. Take this round off. <laughs> round five underway. Good point. Is Gio trying to carry him to the last round? Keep busy. Let's to go. the money round. Got two Be a rounds. bad idea. I mean, listen, you get a bonus no matter what. I, I, I think you obey your father and you go for it here in the fifth, but. We'll see what Giovanni Marquez is able to put together. The 23-year-old from Houston, Texas. Maybe he gets the bigger bonus and buys his father a nice little gift. <laughs> and Velez still just doing just enough. To not get stopped. Not only not to just get stopped, but frankly, to keep Giovanni Marquez honest as well. Marquez has taken more shots yeah. in this fight than we've seen him take in any other fight. Yes. He's doing a lot of great work offensively. Yes, it looks like he could be on his way to stopping the biggest name that he's ever faced. Yes. But as you mentioned earlier, Ock, it's not like he's not being tested in this fight. Oh, absolutely. Look, he's made some defensive mistakes, and I'm pretty sure that Raul will go back to the drone board in the gym and work on those things. But he's fighting a guy who has been in so many fights, and he's, he's, oh, he's getting really close to stopping him. So I, I mean...
tuck your chin, keep your head off the line. He's fighting a guy that's experienced, but the guy is not doing things that are special that he should be making Marquez look like. That's it. Let's go. I would say body. Set him up. Yeah. Get on your, There we go. Get that rhythm. Come on. I like that rhythm. Hey, Raul, what does, Gio, what does Gio need to do to, to score the knockout here? What do you want him to be doing? He's going to apply more pressure right now. Be, be more consistent with his combination. Push him back. Bump him off. That Those kind of jabs. I heard you say... Come on, pop with that jab. I heard you say punching bag, punching bag earlier. Do you want him to just go for it and flurry? Yeah, come forward and attack at angles. He's standing too much in front of him. That's why Giovanni gets hit every now and then. Bro, this guy's ready to go. He's got to walk him down. Bro, walk him what down. About He's ready attack. to go. He's ready, Gio. There you go. Little sneaky uppercut to the body. Come on. Good combination here for Marquez. That's it. Keep touching. Keep touching. Stay right there. Stay right there. Let's go. And some blood coming from Velez. He's right here. The left needs to start looking closer here. about what they wanted to hear heading into the final round. Man, okay? This is the round. This is the when things get tough and it's the final round and you may feel a little tired, what pushes me is my will to win. My will to win is something my grandfather instilled into me as a young age. That inner voice is telling me how bad you want it, how bad you want it, I want it bad, so I go out there and This is the round. This is the round, okay? Let's go. Keep punching the punches. Don't get careless. Don't get careless. Keep punching the punches. Chin down. Let's go. Chin down. You got it. Let's go. Tired. My desire of better life. Uh, I want to become a uh, world champion for a personal goal, but obviously the money is involved and, and it will me get more money, so for a better life, I want a uh, world champion, but who wants money? You got it, Jill, right there! You know, when you got a, Talk to me. you have a guy that's hurt, Talk to me, you have to set Let's him go. up, set a trap Let to land right one Let's big go. shot and finish the fight. He's not hurt enough to just throw flurries and get the ref to stop. You have to hurt I don't him. agree. I don't agree. I think one good flurry and get this guy out of here. Or one good shot that's set up with a jab. Every flurry he throws, he lets him off the hook by backing up. And oh, right. still there you go. That's the start. Right hook, left hook. Now, don't stop. Stay that on. could be the start yeah, he's of still the still getting end. hit while he's doing it. Velez is still throwing back. Marquez really going for it in this round. You can I notice see. a little extra zip on those punches. And again, this is the money round. A little extra bonus. And should one be. of these fighters score a knockout? Good shot by Velez coming back. He pushing might be back. a little gassed out, Giovanni, here. His mouth is wide open. That's what I'm saying. Is it a condition or what? That's All right, got him in the corner. What do you do? Let your hands go. There's a minute 45 to get this done. He wants to close the show. In dramatic fashion. Velez has not stopped. I got to give props to Velez just for right staying in his swollen shut. Uh oh. Hard right hand over the top there for Marquez. And guys, if Marquez is a little bit gassed, I think you could forgive him. He's been throwing knockout shots basically for six rounds. We felt like he's on the brink of a stoppage for the last five rounds. There it goes. I think it's, I think I it's over. That right hand was fit, about finished it. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's over. He's even a couple more shots. The ref is seconds from stopping this fight. 100%. Oh. Set it up with the jab, Gio. There you go. Uh, 50 oh, seconds. Good shot by Velez. Listen, I am not going out. That's what Velez is saying. You're not getting the bonus on my account, he says. <laughs> 
and look at the redness, the swelling on the face of Jason Velez. He has endured a pounding in this fight, and still, here in the sixth round, he's the one moving forward. Yes. Absolutely. I'm not upset at the experience that Giovanni is getting in this show down here. Ooh, that is a big mouse on the right, on the right eye of the But a nice time uppercut would have been beautiful deal right there. Stiff jab there from Marquez right on that swollen eye, but time is running out for Marquez to catch that KO bonus. Jason Velez, the former world title challenger, gives some good rounds to the young prospect out of Houston. No bonus today. Respect to Velez for finishing that fight on his feet. Listen, respect to Giovanni for being in there with a vet. And like, to Corey's point, power shots the entire fight. So you, you gotta get, expect the guy to get a little tired. Uh, all right, let's take a look back at some of the handiwork from Gio Marquez and, frankly, Jason Velez, who never stopped throwing shots even into the sixth round. Right, the hardest shots, obviously, by Gio. That right hand was... I, I thought that was enough for them to call the fight. Great uppercut right hand by Gio. Oh, man, up. three punches landed, hard punches in a row. Velez still holding on. One, two, three. Look, Velez never stopped coming in, and Gio would let him off the hook. I mean, but he tried, he tried his best to get him out of there. Props to both fighters tonight. The both fighters waiting in their corners right now, of course. As we talked about earlier on tonight, there is the potential of an overtime round in any fight. Not this one. Not this one. But I don't think we will be getting it this time around. No way. We got an entertaining fight, though, nevertheless. A valiant effort from Jason Velez. And, you know, guys, this is a difficult way to make a living. Obviously, that, that's valuable experience that Jason Velez has given Giovanni Marquez here tonight. But it's still tough to watch a former title challenger working his way down the ladder and taking punishment like that. All right, looks like we are ready to make this one official. Let's set it back up to Lupe Contreras. Ladies and gentlemen, they're going all six rounds inside the OTX ring. We consult the official scorecard to determine a winner. All three judges are in complete agreement, turning in identical scores of 59 to 55. In favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Ain't nothing but a G thing. Still undefeated. Giovanni. Gio Marquez. How are you feeling right now, standing here tonight as a victor, still undefeated on this big stage tonight? I want to give thanks to God for keeping me safe, allowing me to get to come out victorious. And I feel I feel good. I'm happy to get this victory, but I definitely got to go back home, get to work, and make some improvements. What adjustments did you have to make to get this win tonight? Would you say he was your most difficult opponent yet? I would say he was most battle-tested in terms of, like, being able to evade punches and whatnot. Uh, I, I started off a little slow, but then I got my rhythm, and I picked it up. But I was loading up with shots a little too much. I just got to stay a little more composed. Most definitely. And as a son of a former world champion, what does this win mean to your family? And how has your family elevated your boxing career? Uh, this win means the legacy continues. We're going to go back to the gym. We're going to continue to work hard, and we're going to keep keep getting better, and we're going to still continue the hunt to world titles. Congratulations, Giovanni. That was an epic fight. Back to you guys. Thank you so much, Aaliyah. Uh, you guys were discussing uh, a little friendly wager uh, oh, before the interview. No. What, what were you talking about? Not, no, no, no not, a, not a real bet. I'm just saying that we knew that the first round went to Velez. Marquez started a little bit too slow, and he, it's a learning lesson. That's all. We'll, we'll get the judges' scorecards later and talk about it. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at the highlights here. And outside of that first round, it was mainly a highlight reel for Giovanni Marquez as we yes. look back at some of his handiwork.
I mean, Velez put up a good effort because that was a good right hand by Velez right there. But those right hands and left hooks were just, just too much for Velez. Good counter right. Look, I know Giovanni had made some mistakes. Oh, good there, left hook by he Velez. He still has a lot to, to be proud of, Giovanni, dealing with a bet like that. That's the story of the whole night. Just every left hand and right hand landed on Velez's chin. He just refused to go down. All right, well, let's quantify that performance, shall we? Let's take a look at the punch stats courtesy of CompuBox. You see Giovanni Marquez throwing 468 punches in just six rounds. He was busy. He landed 134 of them. As we mentioned, Velez doing some good work as well. He landed 87 punches. He was right there with Giovanni Marquez in terms of his accuracy. But again, age, activity, a factor. Marquez younger, faster, stronger, busier in this one. Okay. I mean, that was an epic, epic performance. But now we're going to go to Tom. We're going to go overtime Tom, who's with Vic Blends. Hey, thank you, fellas. I am down here with Vic Blends, as you mentioned. Thank you for coming out. What did you think of the fight? Oh, crazy. Seat of the person is so different. You watch it online, you watch it on social media, but when you see somebody get punched for real, you see the blood coming, it's crazy. And you told me you, you've been into boxing for a minute. Tell me about your relationship with the sport. Yeah, I was fighting amateur boxing my senior year and a little bit after high school for a bit in Fayetteville, North Carolina, back in my hometown. And you're about, you know, in that, that range of the weight class that we just saw. If I throw you in there with Gio Marquez, how do, uh, how do we do? I'm not taking no losses. Now, I, I'll never say anybody could beat me. I love it. I love it. And hey, but you are, you said you would box against an influencer. I'm going to throw some names out. You tell me who wins. All right, you ready? All right, you versus FaZe Rug. Me. I love Rug. I just saw him the other day, but me. All right, I'll take that. You versus Bryce Hall. I'm, I'm killing Bryce Hall. That's my guy, too, but I, I ain't going out like that. All right, you versus Jake Paul. I'm going to smoke Jake Paul. Are you sure? I'm positive. All right, well, we'll just keep it going then. What about who do you think? All right, what do you think happens in the Jake Paulberg Mike Tyson fight coming up in a little bit? Ah, uh, man, I don't know, man. Mike Tyson, for sure, I want to see him do his thing, but I just don't think they're going to let the legend go out like that. I, they can't. It, Jake Paul can't do the legend like that. I, I don't think it's right. All right, now, well, I'm, me and you, who wins? Uh, Back to you guys in the booth. Okay, <laughs> <you> <laughs> Oh, Vic Blanz, I mean, he's ready to hand out fades of a different kind. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Handing out fades. I love the confidence in a young Vic Blanz. A big win for Giovanni Marquez. Some heavyweight action coming your way in just a few moments. We'll be back right after the break. Hey, champ. I know why you're here. You're a born winner, the top dog. You have a proper punch on you. It only takes one, eh? But I know you're not all about throwing haymakers. You know your bobs from your weeds. And you know the zone's got over 100 live events every year. Over 100. Proper stack. All the action, the chaos, the comebacks, the non-stop knockout. Big fights every week. So get those gloves back on. Together, we're boxing royalty. The zone, undisputed. I know I'm good when that's C4. All right, it is time to get the big guys in the ring. Heavyweight action coming your way. The first heavyweight fight in overtime history. The Mack truck, Dakari Scott, taking on a Teddy straight out Webster. A lot of man in the ring there. You see Mack Truck at 274, Teddy Webster at 252. The 35-year-old Teddy Webster looking to spring an upset here tonight. Let's take a closer look at both of these heavyweights. I always want to fight. That's all I want to do, fight, fight, fight. I'm coming and running over. They call me Mac Truck for a reason. Nickname Teddy basically came from my uh, auntie. I don't know why she called me Teddy, but I'm, I'm real dangerous. My name is Dakari Scott. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm repping Decatur, that's where I grew up. I want to be a real champion. I'm the next real champion to Atlanta, like Holyfield was. I really got to beat this guy up because he at home. I feel like some of you at home, like you already got the up. So it's a Mississippi night. I know I'm in Atlanta, but tonight it's a Mississippi night. 
I'm a short heavyweight, but I'm slick. Hard to hit. A good jab. The punch you throw to me, I come back 10 10 hard. Man. I like a knockout look. The goal is to win. I know I'm gonna walk out with my hands up in there. This bout, six rounds in the heavyweight division, making his ring walk, Teddy Webster. So here comes the 35-year-old Teddy Webster, nickname straight out, as in a straight out the jungle of Mississippi, Teddy Webster got into boxing to get out of fighting in the street. He said that at one point, I was just costing my family money to get me out of jail. Well, guys, not only is he going to receive a purse no matter what he does here tonight, but he's got some bonuses that he can cash in. <laughs> Probably not going to happen, but I, I like him doing it the legal way. <laughs> when he started at a late age. His opposition. Dakari Sky. His mother, who is walking to the ring with him. Of late has been getting some good work sparring with Big Baby Miller, but also sparring with the biggest boss, Rick Ross. <laughs> yeah, listen, speaking of mama though, Corey, I'm not sure if you heard of what his mama say in the chant. Mama say crack crack. We're gonna hear that tonight, and apparently the, the whole crowd is gonna say it. Scott family full of big personalities. And this man is a big puncher, seven knockouts in his eight victories. We continue with the action here in boxing's newest proving grounds, the OTE Arena. Atlanta, Georgia, it is the return of OTX Friday Night Fights, powered by C4 Energy, this contest. Six rounds or less, the big boys of boxing in the heavyweight division. Our judges are Nola Oliver, Eric Gilbert, and Ed Kanner. In charge of the ring, referee Malik Waleed. Presenting first, in the blue corner, he enters wearing red with black trim. He weighed in at an official 252 and three quarter pounds. Tonight, this battle-tested brawler enters the OTX ring for the ninth time as a pro with six victories against two losses. Two of those victories coming by way of KO. Fighting out of Cortland, Mississippi. Teddy, straight out the jungle. Across the ring, the red corner, wearing blue with black and white, he weighed in at 277 and one quarter pounds. Tonight, this iron-fisted heavy hitter enters the OTX ring for the 10th time as a pro with eight victories against one lone defeat, seven of his victories coming by way of knockout. Ripping the ATL, Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, fellas, I'm expecting good, clean boxing. When I say break, stop punching, take a full step back. Remember, protect yourselves at all times. Touch them up. Good luck to you both. We are set for heavyweight action here. Six rounds. The Mack truck, Dakari Scott, and Teddy straight out Webster. We last saw the Mack truck scoring a fourth round TKO win over Aaron Chavers at the atrium in Atlanta last May. So a little bit of a layoff for him. Teddy Webster, impressive in a losing outing last time out. Went six rounds with top prospect Sonny Canto in Philadelphia last November. 
I mean, that fight with Sonny Kanto was, was brutal, but he stayed on his feet. He was landing every shot, Kanto. Both these men have taken big steps, steps up, excuse me, early in their career. Right now, Teddy Webster trying to step to the Mack truck right now, getting on the offensive early on. You see the game plan of Webster's, I got to get this guy out of here. I might not be in shape. I'm 20 pounds heavier than in my last fight. I got to get this guy out of here early. And it might be a recipe for disaster when you punch yourself out at this size. That's if Mack Truck can take his shots. It looks like he can. Mack Truck is giving off those, you know, those vibes of the of old throwback fighter. Maybe Butterbean. Very comfortable in there. I mean, obviously, you can see the difference in Ooh. experience, pedigree. Well, Webster had five years' experience, and <laughs> Mack Truck's been fighting for 16 years. Mack Truck, a participant at the 2020 Olympic trials. Just 35 amateur fights, but again, during that time, working with, sparring with top amateurs, and we've mentioned some of the training camps that he's Ooh. been in as of late. The only loss on his career was to Jonathan Guidry, who challenged Trevor Bryan for a version of the WBA heavyweight title a couple of years back. Frankly, probably too big of a step up for Mack Truck at that stage in his career, but credit to him for taking it. 100% credit for him for taking that, and you are well-schooled, my friend. <laughs> um, you know what's surprising me? The, the head movement of Mack Truck, I like it. I like it a lot. Well, why is this surprising you? you know, he's an experienced be, boxer. Because you're in there with an inexperienced guy, and sometimes you, you tend to, like, but that fight at his level and, head, and just try to get him out of there. I, I tell you what. Ooh, good straight the talk by Mack Truck. all week has been that Webster has an iron chin. And I, I, I do think that Matt Truck is going to test that today. We'll find out. <laughs> well, he certainly showed that, Barack, as you mentioned, against Sonny Kanto. Yes. A legitimate top prospect in the heavyweight division. But those types of fights also stay with you. And Mack Truck is putting it on him here in the early going of round one. Ock, you alluded to the fact that Teddy Webster at one point thought about trying to work his way down to cruiserweight, but his body, his lifestyle, whatever it might have been, said, no way, I'm staying up here at heavyweight. No, I like to eat. I need my french fries and my burgers, no way. Right, and since then he's gained 50-something pounds. <laughs> Look, not to mention, he's 35 years old. You know this is a young man's sport. He has his mouth open already. He's, he's a little winded. But he's hanging in it. Oh, I like the body work flurry. that Mack Truck is putting in here. Well, there's some Sneaky good shots to the body. Right. And a nice uppercut as well. Mack Truck falling off balance there, but still got that shot off. An exciting opening round from Scott and Webster. I'll tell you what, Bozy has his work cut out for him today. <laughs> he's been in and out this corner all night. He still has another fighter coming up. Well, coming up, it is our main event. A little bit later on, you see Arthur Villanueva getting taped up. This is a man who is a chess master outside of the sport of boxing. And he'll be taking on this man, the Wolf, Elijah Pierce, who had his coming out party here in Atlanta last year. And has been making a lot of noise, calling out the monster. Now you're in a way, getting into a back and forth with Tank Davis. He is making noise any way he can right now, but where it matters is in the ring, and we'll see him later on in our main event. Haven't heard Mama say crack, crack yet. Yes. Waiting to hear that. Oh, uh -oh. and that was a Might crack. Come now. <laughs> uh, he cracked him in the right hand there. Start to the round there for Dakari Scott. It's 10 seconds into the round, landing that overhand right. We've seen him score some devastating knockouts with that exact shot. It's giving me some Andy Cruz, Andy Ruiz vibes. <laughs> I knew he was going to bring him up. Oh, Bozy was asking for for Mac Truck is the overhand right is there, but he wants him to follow it with the left uppercut. He could be giving you Andy Cruz vibes. He's in camp with him too. <laughs> that is true. That is true. <laughs> I think but they're I a little Ruiz. different though. <laughs> I met Ruiz, but yeah. Bozy's becoming a hot trainer right now. Everybody wants a piece of him. Okay, look at Teddy switching to the left hand stance. Okay, switch back to the orthodox. It looks like that first first round took a lot out of. Teddy stuff, yeah. Oh, absolutely. 
Absolutely. I say a little body attack. Maybe. There you go. I was just about to say that. Go to the body. When you see the when you see your opponent's mouth open like that, start hitting that body, and that's what he's, he's doing. He's been doing good, that. Good right hand by Mack Truck. Good, another one. Scott continues to go downstairs to the body with that right hand. One thing that that Mack Truck hasn't been doing is letting his jab go, and I think that that was serving well in this fight. I mean, to be fair to Mack Truck, he hasn't really had to. He's been yeah, able to just kind of slip and roll and get to the inside. But but you're right, Ock. I think that perhaps he could set up that big right. overhand right exactly. by maintaining a little bit of distance. But I think you start falling in love with the success on the inside that he's having. Yeah, but at, at some points he's smothering his own shots because he's not at the right distance, and that's what the jab does. Yeah, uh, but, but um, Webster's hands is just so low, and his chin is just right there. Do you really need to set it up? <laughs> you just need to throw that right hand. He has. Give him a feint and throw it. Guys, I, I think that this is an instance of that potential bonus playing a factor here. I, you have to think that Teddy Webster went out the way that he did, influenced by a potential cash bonus. I, I mean, you're suggesting that maybe it could be knowing what his cardio capacity is. That could play a factor, too. But I think Teddy was going for the money. I think that was on his mind as well. No, I just think he said, I, I'm, I'm heavy. You see how tight he got tight in the first round. I think he said, "Let me see if this guy could take my shots." Oh, big home. overhand right there for the Mack truck. Uh oh. Webster, you know punched you over right now. You don't like the body language right now, <laughs> but you're liking it if you're a fan of Dakari Scott. Hands down, he's that's a defeated fighter right there, Webster. I, I'm, even if he doesn't go down, I, I can I can see Mack truck scoring to stop his victory in the next coming of seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Webster firing back, staying alive. It looks like he will remain in this fight. But the Mack truck starting to break down Teddy Webster. Well, coming up next, we have a battle of undefeated fighters. The OTX fighter Haven Brady Jr. 11-0 as he takes on Waldemir Kirill, the second straight undefeated fighter that Haven Brady is taking on here in this arena. Okay, this is surprising. Teddy Webster can barely walk back to his corner because of fatigue, but he chose to stand up. This is too much energy to get back up off the stool. A lot of fighters do that, especially heavyweights. Round three underway, and you hear Bozianis. They want. Dakari Scott right on top of Teddy Webster. They saw what we saw, a wounded fighter at the end of round two, and maybe a fighter in Teddy Webster that's ready to go. Yeah. The counter shot there from Scott. Good body attack by, by Mack Truck here. Both hands to the body. I think that took a lot, has taken a lot out of Webster as well. Oh, good job by Webster. <laughs> From the left-handed stance. Well, you know what, what they say when you switch south for a lot of times is because you're tired. <laughs> I, I never heard anyone say that. <laughs> no, but you, this is no. definitely true right now. Well, what it's done is allowed Scott to land just a straight right hand on the way in. <laughs> and, and that's one of the risks that you take if you're turning southpaw. Are you as defensively responsible in that stance. You might look, you might like what you're seeing offensively, <laughs> but right now it is not benefiting him as Scott all over him with Webster's back against the ropes and Webster just looks absolutely exhausted. Well, he's not, he's not defensively responsible from the right hand stance either. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a little blood coming from around the eye of Webster as well. Uh -oh. Hard right hand over the top, Teddy Webster. Just Good hanging work. in there. Good work on Mack Truck here. Webster hunched over. Big right hand again from Scott. The referee taking a close look. See the referee paying double ducks. He's about to jump in there. I don't know how much Teddy Webster has left in the tank. Mack Truck has one minute. 
left to get him out of here as he's gashed up. Oh, he's coming back. One good barrage like the Marquez fight, and this fight is over. Mack Truck also doesn't want to punch himself out, but I like how he's still going to the body, taking even more out of him. Scott with a golden opportunity to close the show here. Webster again, head down, Ooh. hands down. Webster's too tired to throw punches back. He has a slight cut oh. on his left eye. Oh, <laughs> the whole crowd right. knew. Scott the whole just crowd. missed that one. He knew it. The crowd knew it. Can he find it right there? Hard chopping right hand. Another one. The overhand right is not landing. You got to go to that left hook. Go to that body. Boom. Come back up with the left hook. My Webster just barely standing as much from exhaustion as from the punishment. Final moments here of round three and a welcome reprieve, I'm sure, for Teddy Webster. Not coming to lay down. I'm sure he wants to lay down in that corner right now. <laughs> Take oh. a little nap, huh? Good right hook but, and left hook miss the truck. Tried to set it up with the jab, but he missed with that one. That one two connected. Another one two. Oh, good Tyson. Oh, little Mike Tyson combo. <laughs> good thing. Tyson combo by right truck. To the body, followed by an uppercut. Classic combination right there. Well, from the big man to two of the best fighters in the smaller weight classes in the world after unifying the IBF and WBO World Flyweight titles, Bam Rodriguez faces Juan Francisco Estrada June 29th here on DAZN. Guys, I absolutely cannot wait for that fight. Oh, my God. That, that is one of the best matchups in all of boxing. So here we go with round four, and, and Teddy Webster could barely take a couple of steps out of his corner, guys. Mac Chuck has three right, rounds. Right. There you go, Keith. Keith. Fight back, Mac. Fight back. Fight back. To get that Don't let him breathe. Yeah. You heard Bozianis just say, oh. Don't let him breathe. Uh -huh. And down he goes. Well, you have your answer there. Teddy you Webster is leaking blood right now. Go to the body. He is up at the count of eight. I guess his iron chin couldn't stand up to Matt Truck's right Matt, hand. Do what I just told you. Go, Lots go, of time go. for Matt Truck to go, work go. with right here. Go to the blow. Go. Hard right hand over the top. Still not afraid right to here, engage. Man. Teddy's trying to make a comeback. Right back. What I tell you, man. Go it's to the It's desperation body. time. Go to the body. For Teddy Webster. As Dakari Scott hunts for his eighth professional knockout. Tony, Mac! Tony! A wounded animal is dangerous. And that's what Webster's right showing. He's trying to rest. Stay on him. Stay on him. I don't think he has enough gas left in him to be dangerous for Rock right now. Come out of the top, man. Come out of the top. Oh. Just right right hand over the top, just grazing the chin of Teddy Webster. He keeps bringing that right hand. Finish it, Mac! Finish it! I think he, cho he chops Finish him down it. to the body and comes upstairs. He ends this fight. Well, that uppercut just split the guard of Teddy Webster. Uh -oh. Look at Webster trying to fire back. Plenty of heart Finish from Teddy back. Webster, but his legs are betraying Keep him right going, now. Keep going. Uh oh, this ref is looking really close. Keep going. The referee back, back. looking for a reason to stop this one. Keep the pressure on him, Max. Dakari has one minute left to try to end this fight now and get a bonus, a knockout bonus. Scott just looking oh. for the uppercuts. That right hand comes through once more. Get it back. Get it back. Okay, and that the fight is, is over. It. All gas, no brakes. The Mack truck just runs through Teddy Webster. Woo. Great performance by Mack truck. The guy that said everyone was saying all week had an iron chin, he would not be able to stop him. People were saying it was going to distance. He proved all of them wrong. We need what, one of them horn, you know, them truck horns yeah, right exactly, now. Yeah, exactly, yeah. You know, they say iron sharpens iron, but now we see also iron damages iron as well. <laughs> All right, that was just a fun heavyweight slugfest. Absolutely. You don't need to dress it up any more than that. Let's take a look back at the replays.
Oh, left hook puts the iron chin <laughs> Webster down. And he does a little dance in the reference, like, get in the neutral corner. Mack Truck, beautiful left uppercut by Mack Truck. Had him in the corner, just a barrage of punches. I believe he knew at this time that if I just do a barrage and Webster's not punching back, then I'm going to get a stoppage, and that's what Mack Truck got. Can you call that for Tom Great performance. Right me? Third knockout of the night for OTX5. So Dakari Scott, you'd have to think, I mean, how is this guy not going to be a, cr a crowd favorite? You can't not like this guy. Listen, mama say crack, crack. And that's what we saw tonight. I'm surprised I didn't hear his mother screaming in the crowd if she's here. You don't, you don't get, too many times you don't get it where a mother forces a child to fight. And that's what we have here. You know, as vicious as Matt Truck is in the ring, he's a teddy bear outside of the ring. Very lovable guy. I wish him the best. Looking forward to seeing what's next for him. Well, Scott certainly understands uh, the marketing aspect of the sport. And, you know, I, I think we're all realistic of about where Scott is in his career right now, in his development. We mentioned the loss to Jonathan Guidry. Scott in a good camp with that yeah, and his camp. Man. He's learning the right things right now, but still a ways to go before we can talk about Scott entering contention. Right. That's two and, and, we got. Now we got to wait and he lacks size, so he has to bring even more to the table in this division. Right. We talk about that, the loss, but you know what I saw that was good tonight? It was that he's listening to what Bozy's saying. When he's saying throw the one-two, he's throwing the one-two. When he's saying let his hands go, he's letting his hands go. Come here, take a picture. They're going to put it back on me again because I got the next, next guy coming out. Yeah. So the biggest knockout win on the biggest platform for Mack Truck Scott here tonight. And you mentioned, you know, listening to Bozy Ennis, and, and it works here tonight. And you have to think, for a fighter, that also helps build trust in your corner. Because Mack Truck did what he was told. It worked. He gets the knockout loss. That's how that bond continues to strengthen. Right. You, you always want to listen to the outside eye. The outside eye sees everything. So once that trust is gained and you see success, you move forward trusting your corner. I guess that spawn where Rick Rose really paid off. And Mack Truck did bring a crowd here tonight. Mack Truck brought the people out. Everybody tell me. Yeah, everybody call me. Okay. All right. Come on, take some pictures. Come on, take some pictures. Come on, take some pictures. Yeah, Mack Truck brought him out. I seen a. Uh, uh, IG star, he, he, he does skits with uh, Country Wayne, Mike Bless, he's in the crowd, in the VIP section, of course. Good to see Matt Here inside the OTX ring, a series of unanswered blows obligates referee Malik Waleed to stop this contest with an official time of 2 minutes 11 seconds of round number 4, declaring the winner by way of technical knockout from the ATL, Dakari Matra. Improving, excuse me, to 9-1, and one, that being his eighth professional knockout. You mentioned he brought the fans out, and this is, this is the type of character, the type of guy that you can see fans getting behind as well. I, I think there's a sense of humor behind him. There's a lovable nature about him as well, and he's fun to watch in the ring. Very charismatic, yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you talk about the whole package, he brings a lot of those intangibles. Look at that smile. The boy looks like he's 15 years old. I love this All kid. Right. Well, let's send it up to Aaliyah Roscoe, who's standing by with Mack Truck. Congratulations on your victory, Dakari. That was epic. You showed incredible skill and determination tonight. Can you walk us through your game plan coming into the fight tonight? Oh, I'm, I knew Teddy was tough. Uh, he ain't never been stopped before. So I told, I told Britton I'm going to be the first one to stop him. But I knew it's tough. He's going to come out hard. We're going to break him down. That's what we did. I love that. And how did you capitalize on your opponent's weaknesses to get the technical knockout in round four? Man, I won it in round one. Okay. Over round six, but I'll take it. 
take it. <laughs> I love that. And what does this mean for you to win tonight in your hometown, Atlanta, especially in such a historic moment? The overtime's first ever historic bout. That's love. Uh, Atlanta home. I don't train here no more, but Atlanta's home. I'll always be home. My mom's still here. My daughter's still here, so it's all good. And any last words for the viewers watching and everyone who came out to support you tonight? I want to say shout out to my mom, my family, my Jakaria, daddy, love you. And we're going to shout out to Faith Rescue. That's what we coming in. Congratulations, champ. Super happy for you. Back to you guys. Thank you so much, Aaliyah. Big win from Mack Truck. And we're ready to take a look at the final punch stats, courtesy of CompuBox. It was a heavyweight slugfest between Scott and Webster. You see Scott throwing 289 punches. He landed 90 of them. A good chunk of those came in that final round. He did what he had to do, Ock. He had a wounded fighter in front of him, and all he had to do was step on the gas. Yeah, I mean, he fought a guy that was a game fighter who actually came to fight, but just outclassed him, outleveled him. He just wasn't ready for Mack Truck. You know, Corey, with two fights left on the card, what are the odds of us seeing an overtime, overtime time round in this in this Not card? Tonight, buddy. Listen, Slim? We, no, zero, zero, zero chance. We, no, we've got two evenly matched <laughs> fights got, coming we got, up. We got two undefeated fighters. Exactly, coming. we've got some good fights coming your way. So stick with us. We'll be back with more action right after the break. Live on the Zone Worldwide, May 18th. The fight of the century. Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Tyson Fury looks to reign as king of the division. But Alexander Usyk is undefeated and coming for the crown. For the first time in over 20 years, all the belts are on the line. Ring of Fire, live on the Zone Worldwide, May 18th. When you gotta fit 29 hours into a 24 hour day, I know I'm good when that C4 hits. It's go time! Hello? Ni hao? Bonjour. Because before you know it, it's another day and you gotta be ready to go. So let's fing go! Oh, it's time for our co-feature of the night. Haven Brady Jr., Waldemar Carrill, two undefeated fighters in the super featherweight division as we take a look at the tail of the tape. You see Waldemar Carrill coming in as the underdog in this fight, but he'll enjoy some physical advantages. Two inches in terms of height, two inches in terms of reach. Haven Brady Jr., the one coming in with a little bit more hype. But Waldemar Carrill trying to stop the hype train here tonight. Let's take a closer look at both of our co-main event fighters. My name is Haven Brady Jr. My name is Waldemar Carrill Arizaga, and I'm from Moca, Puerto Rico. I'm from Auburn, in Georgia, and I'm repping at 229. Since the last time y'all saw me, there's something just clicked in me. I don't know, I just flow different. Eh, muchos puertorriqueños aman el boxeo. Eh, es una isla pequeña, pero tenemos muchos campeones mundiales que ha tenido y queremos ser uno de ellos. People always ask me about my opponent, like, what you think about him? I just say he's not me, you know? And I know my potential, so I don't care what he brings to the table, he's just not me. Me alegro por él mucho que, que esté pensando así, que venga bien preparado porque nosotros venimos al máximo. It looks very, very embarrassing when you go in there and do a lot of talking and you, you don't perform like that. When you face me, you're going to see who you're facing. If you have the force. Finally, Mr. to my opponent, I still don't know his name to this day. Um, Barack, you mentioned a vibe at a club. Trying to arrange 
some step-up fights, trying to find better opposition in Puerto Rico, but he says that the prospects in and around his experience level, they weren't willing to take fights against him. So he's, he decided to look in the United States, to look for an opportunity <laughs> here at overtime, and he is stepping in against Haven Brady Jr. here tonight. Well, when you... Think about Puerto Rico and the pedigree of fighters that they produce, right? You have to believe a guy that's coming in there with this level of confidence. He says, look, I'm okay with him thinking I haven't fought good opposition. You must have not heard of a little island called Puerto Rico and what they produce. His rival, Haven Brady Jr. for Haven Brady, guys. He might have been on the practice courts behind us here tonight. He grew up thinking he might be the next Allen Iverson. But then he figured out, oh, boxing has weight classes. And that benefits me at my stature. And indeed, he has turned out to be a force of a prospect in his weight class. Yeah, he was also playing football. And he looks like a, you know, like a running back or whatever. But this kid got skills. He couldn't dunk. That's what it was. <laughs> Like we continue it. with the action in the newest proving ground in professional boxing. OTE Arena, Atlanta, Georgia. It is the return of OTX Friday Night Fights, powered by C4 Energy. This is our co-main event of the evening, set for eight rounds in the super featherweight division. The judges are Nola Oliver, Eric Gilbert, and Ed Canner. In charge of the action, referee Nate Mann. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, two undefeated fighters, but someone's gonna take an L tonight. Introducing first, the fighter in the blue corner. He enters wearing red with black and white trim. He weighed in officially at 133 pounds tonight. Inside the OTX ring, he makes his mainland USA debut with an undefeated record of eight victories. Four of those victories coming by way of KO from Moca, Puerto Rico. Boricua to the bone. Waldemar. Walde Carri. In the red corner, wearing black with silver trim, he weighed in at 132 and one half pounds tonight. This multi-dimensional, multi-sport athlete enters the OTX ring an undefeated pro with 11 victories. Four of his victories coming by way of knockout. Representing Albany, Georgia, Haven Hitman Brady Jr. Wait a minute. I think Haven might have the biggest crowd here tonight. I think Georgia has the crowd. <laughs> you know? All right, gentlemen, over the rules in the dressing room. Make sure you obey my commands at all times. Make sure you protect yourself at all times. We are going to have a clean fight. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. Come out fighting. All right, back up. Let's go. You know I'm about fits, and I'm liking Haven's fit. Yeah. But what do you think about them not, not touching, touching gloves, gloves there? I don't like that. I think the referee should make them touch gloves. I mean, I've seen it plenty of times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> These guys are ready to fight. What do you expect? Eight rounds in the super featherweight division. Haven Brady, the black trunks trimmed in silver. Waldemir Carrill, the red trimmed in silver. Carrell starting off fighting nice and tall, going to the body with the jab. And Brady's going to the body with the jab as well. He's a switch hitter. Carrell is. Both undefeated fighters here. 
Well, we saw Mack Truck in our last fight. Waldemar Kirill, he drives a moving truck outside of boxing as well. He has to pay the bills with both boxing and the day job. Haven Brady Jr. Well, he's been in the classroom as well, getting degrees. Yeah. Business, in school for business. All right, well, let's see if he can school Kirill tonight. Good counter right to the body. Yeah. Kirill comes uh, from a, a very deep boxing town in Mocha, Puerto Rico. Good shot there from Kirill a moment ago. Brady scored a six-round unanimous decision over Davey Julio. That was in Philadelphia last November. Brady scored three knockdowns in that fight, but he also survived a little bit of a flash knockdown in the fourth round. So that's also what's fun about Haven Brady. There is a tiny bit of vulnerability because of his willingness to exchange. Which is a recipe for exciting fights. Oh, the crowd going. Keep going. That was straight to the body. What Good job by Kirill. But he has. Keep that pressure on him, hey. He don't like that pressure, hey. Right hook. Right hook when he goes to the right. Right hook. You got to throw the right hook, he's going to the right. Right, 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 right there, right there. Much. Right there. Right back, hey. Right back. You see the reach Come advantage the of Kirill, and that can be dangerous potentially for Brady as he looks for that counter left hook. Right, right, Brady with the right hand back, speed, hey, that counter right see, hand has been money for him here in the opening round. But Kareem is not using that size advantage. He's actually getting too close and giving Yo, Brady a better opportunity to land shots. Right he should be using the jab. Right there. Right back, He's throwing hey, right that right hook. Hey, you gotta get right on him. He don't like that pressure. Guys, as you can hear, Bozy here. Yeah, but I think Kirill is doing good in this round. Pushing I, think he, I think he's landing some shots. Yes. A little wide and Move your head, too, hey. Get that defense up. Move, move your head, hey. As Bozy is saying, he keep wants to keep his hands head. up. Keep the pressure on him. Not much of a feeling out process here in the opening round as Brady right finds another right hand. Kirill momentarily off balance. And they exchange shots. Shot yet, but you can tell he's comfortable moving forward and getting hey, hey, to his right spots. Listen, right when he goes to the right, I want you to throw that right hook and then All correct right, to the right. Let's send it back to the time Tom, who's standing by with the wolf. So right? Appreciate you, fellas. I'm down here with Elijah Pierce, who is getting ready for his fight in a little bit. My guy, how are you doing? Doing well, well, man. Feeling good, feeling great. Ready to do it again? Yep. Now you've won down here in OTX before. What's it like to be back trying to uh, trying to get it done? Oh man, it feels good. You know, I, I put in the work, and I'm just gonna let God do His thing. And now you got a great haircut, a great fit. Tell me about everything that you're rocking today, getting ready for a fight. Oh, uh, you know, we got that purple and green. Of course, I got my grandparents with my grandparents. You know, they passed uh, recently, so you know, of course, I gotta honor them. You know, bring them in the ring with me. We're gonna get this victory. We're gonna do it. Gracefully. All right, let me get a little bit more of a hit. Come on, man. Okay, I, I can take something. Huh? I can take something. <laughs> All right, man. Give me same, a prediction. Same, what's what's going to happen in the game? What's going to happen in the fight? It's, it's going to be early night. I believe that it's coming. We getting a knockout? Absolutely. All right, it's I coming. love it. I love it. Appreciate you, my guy. No doubt. Elijah Wolf Pierce. He's coming in a little bit. Hopefully, the C4 fight of the night. After the fight's tonight, you can vote on OTX Overtime Boxing. See if we can get it done. Good luck, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate Back to you guys. Thanks so much, Tom. So, Elijah Pierce, not straying from that prediction, guys. Still promising that early knockout. Didn't say first round, but early. Well, he told me first round. I'm holding him to that. Keep going. Keep going, hey. Behaven Brady back applying pressure here on Waldemar Carrill. Hey, break it, break it. Well, as he said back, earlier, O'Shea motivated him after getting that big win, and he's ready to follow back, there follow in her footsteps. And get the stoppage. Hey, he can't stand the pressure, hey. Beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful, hey. I think Brady's doing doing much better with his distance this round. That's why the right hand is connecting. A shot to the body there. He can't 
from Haven Brady. Tempo picking up here in the second round. And Haven Brady is really trying to reinvent himself as a person and as an athlete. Of course, earlier in his career, he was released for, from a, a promotional contract. He missed weight a couple of times, and he kind of had that stain on him. But now he feels that he's one of the hardest working fighters in the sport, and he's trying to up the tempo in the ring to reflect that as well. I think he realized he messed up the blessing that he had fighting on other big networks, you know, and now you got that opportunity again. You're here on the zone. You got an overtime contract. You got you to gotta really show and prove. And he looks in perfect shape physically. But he's putting the work in, in the gym for sure. He's walking him down nice. Good one, two by Brady. Yeah, he has to work that body. I think Kirill uh, feels the power. I don't know. He's a little bit more tentative with his shots. I was going to say, I think he's feeling the power. I think he's feeling the pressure as well. Kirill yeah. seems to of ideas right now offensively yeah. and he hasn't figured out how to use his size he's obviously way taller longer longer reach and not using the jab at all not keeping Brady at distance he's playing right into his staff shot there for Brady nice left hook that one might have had an impact on Kirill <laughs> Bozy wants the referee to take a point uh, not yet, He's not yet. Language there. <laughs> off the D, off the D, <laughs> just a little rough house. That's all right. There you go. Missed the big shot. Kirill just missed the big right hand. Uh, we will follow Waldemar Kirill into his corner. And earlier on this week, we asked Kirill about his upbringing in Puerto Rico. I was 17. I had bad friends. I took bad decisions in the way. I was retired for four years. But thanks to God, we came back to the sport and learned a lot. It made me mature and here we are dedicated to continue the objectives. Any shot that got the rough on the side? Yeah, I'm walked away from the sport. He said he made some bad decisions. There is kind of a, a commonality between these two fighters, guys. Guys who feel like they're making up for lost time for very different reasons, but they felt that for different reasons, they weren't as dedicated to the sport as they should have been. But as of recent, Brady's been de very dedicated, sparring with O'Shea, you know, and, and really putting in the work in the gym. What Bozy is asking him to do is, is, is not admire your work. And that means you land a couple of shots like that right hand just now, and you're just looking at what you're stepping back. Stay on him. That's what Bozy wants him to do. The, pre the pressure he is applying is, is serving him well, but to this point, I've yet to see a, a flush landed shot from either guy. There we go. The grill landing short with that right hand. Brady came back with that pull counter right hand. He's been landing that up top. He's been landing it to the body. We're starting to see the same kind of pattern. There he lands a big right hand. There's your flush shot you asked for. Huh? That, that's the one. By Brady. We're starting to see the same pattern that we saw to Brady against Andre Rodriguez here on overtime and last another summer. Left hook there. Right there, hey, right there. Stop waiting. Stop waiting. Real trying to dig to the body. Stop waiting, man. Guys, I don't know if you're noticing the same thing, but Kirill's feet have just been all over the place for the last two rounds. Just does not seem to have his balance underneath him. Put him together, hey. Put him together. The body. The body, hey. Come on, work. Kirill trying to go. double up on that yeah, left hook. Brady again, getting hey. the best of that exchange. Get the ring hey, two. Good right hook and straight left by Kirill. Body, Haven. Hey, 
Hey, stop waiting so long, man. I think Carrillo is pretty talented hey, with, keep going. with the switch hit. He don't like that, hey. Brady hey, just missed with a big together, sweeping hey. right hand. Move, move, move. You get too close. By the 20 seconds here in round three. Fight back, hey, fight back. Body hit. Great right hand by Brady right there. And look, Kareem returns with a straight left hand. This is a great fight. Sorry there for Brady. Two chopping right hands right at the bell. Hey, hey, listen, man. You got to stop waiting, hey. You gotta stop hating. Yo, you gotta stop waiting. You had him in the corner. Yo, you waited to try to set your shot. Let the hands go. You gotta let your hands go, man. You can get him out there. He grab you. You gotta fake sometimes. And sometimes you're throwing your punches. You're smoking your shot. And the ring is just bringing this to me out. So I love that. And I love fighting. And I love I love my family, my friends, and people that follow me that I don't even know come out and support me. It just gives me so much faith. And I just want you to get him a good show. Here we go, round four of our eight-round co-feature between Haven Brady Jr. and Waldemar Carrill. You've been hearing the advice of Bozzi Ennis throughout this contest. In particular, they want more body work from Brady as he goes back downstairs with a jab and then brings the right hand over the top. They both came out in this round like this is the first round. <laughs> Full throttle. Body work makes sense right now. Ooh. They land their left hook. I mean, you got a guy like Karin who's using his leg, moving a lot. He's not cutting off the ring properly. You got to start putting that body work and sort of stole him down. They're both landing great shots. I just think Brady has the harder shots, more impact. I wouldn't say Karin is landing good shots. Uh, those two good body shots right there. Yeah, a couple good body shots from Karin. He'll throw a shot here and there to keep him off of them, but not nothing with any steam on it. Come on, man. Yeah, now I agree with Bozy. Maybe the refs will start man. saying, okay, stop holding. Stop holding to Carell. One thing to keep in mind, too, guys, Carell's never back. had to meet Yo, the full 130 pound limit before tonight. So you have to right. wonder at one point. Keep going. No. Protect yourself at all times. On his body. And let's see what the official have to say about this. See, it's so loud in here, I didn't even hear if the referee told him to stop. Oh, man. Fight to it, hey. Move in on it, hey. Move in. Move in to the body, hey. Body. Body. Haven <laughs> Brady now on top of Waldemar Carrill. Yo, bro. Yo, what is he He's holding a on a little bit, too much. He might be a little bit annoyed by what just happened <laughs> oh, right now. A hundred percent he is. He's really trying to get Kirill out of here. Fight to the body, hey. The only thing he's mi he's missing a lot of shots. I think he need to go back to the jab to set up these shots. Yep. Especially from that range right there. Shoot the jab first. He's landing the left hook from time to time, but he needs to go downstairs to slow Karin down. Karin is still fighting the middle back. there. Sorry, go ahead, Doc. No, I mean, Karina is still fighting back, and he's, okay, on, he's throwing combinations, Yo, but no, no mustard on any of that. It's not Yo, slowing Haven down at all. Man. Real trying to get back downstairs to the body. Brady comes over the top with another nice right hand and one to the Yo, body right at the bell. Halfway through this fight. Yo, all that holding. When are you 
All right, right. well, over time, Tom is standing by with uh, an interested observer, the uh, quote unquote sister of Haven Brady Jr. Hey, thank you, fellas. I am down here with O'Shea Jones. You're watching your brother, Haven Brady, go at it. What do you think of the fight so far? Um, he's doing very good. Um, he's being a little more conservative, but once he put the pressure on him, that boy is out of here. Are we looking for a knockout this round? What do we think is going to happen the rest of the way? If not this round, definitely the next round. He's about to start sitting down on his punches. He's wearing the boy down. He's breaking him down. He's being patient. He's out of there, I'm telling you. And congratulations. You had a win earlier. How are you feeling about that, going to uh, get another win here at OTX? Uh, I feel good. I feel like I could have got her off earlier, um, but I got the job done in the fifth round, so I'm, I'm okay with that. I give myself a C plus. A C plus, a tough grader. Now, I hear a lot of people complaining about the holding of the opponent here on Haven. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think it's ridiculous. He's been holding probably like 10 seconds every time he holds, and the ref's not saying anything. Hopefully, the ref can, can see it this round. I love it. O'Shea, I appreciate you always. Congrats on the win. Back to you guys in the booth. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you. Look at that. O'Shea Jones taking in the action here ringside. Here you Ooh. go. Right back. Hey, I like right the way back. he came out in this round. Right, Brady right. Don't stabbing to the jab, to the body, up top, and straight right to the body. Good, good. Hands up. Playing good, effective pressure right now. Right hand there from Brady a moment ago. And again, Kirill firing every once in a while. Aki would point that out. Barack, you've been doing the same. I think the key, though, is that the movement of Kirill right now, it's negative. He's trying to avoid contact if he can. He's walking himself to the ropes. It's not effective at all. Nowhere to hide in this 18 by 18 ring. Here at overtime boxing, a little bit smaller than many commissions would have. It was approved by there. the Georgia Commission. You'll see an 18 by 18 ring every once in a Happy while, but off. it certainly does induce more action. We're seeing it right here. You have a mover like Kirill who just is not able to enact any kind of a game plan right, right now. There, hey, yeah, but right a fighter there. like Haven Brady, I think yeah. you can have a 22 on, by 22. And he's down. still going to get some. Oh! Good oh. shot there from Brady. And oh, down goes Kirill. I was. I was just about to say, there's some pressure added. Every, we always saw it was knockouts tonight. All it took was a flush right hand from Brady. The hitman looking to finish the job here in the fifth round. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't tell me the ref is taking away a point. He's not taking away a point. What is going on? I don't think he's taking away a point, but no, the back of the head. He, no, but Brady's not an intentional. It definitely was intentional, but he's. I guess he feels that it had an effect on Kirill. He's given. I don't. I'm not sure if I like this, guys. That was that shot wasn't that far behind the head. It was not intentional. It was in the middle of an exchange. He's giving a guy time to rest here. I don't like it. Well, again, this is something you won't see in other jurisdictions. Doctor being able to get in the ring. During the fight, to examine a fighter who, in this case, been hit behind the head. I've never seen that before. It almost made me think the fight was over. I didn't like that. <laughs> Not at all. He was hurt from the right hand that dropped him earlier. And that exchange it was on the side of the head. It wasn't intentional. And, and it wasn't the first time, neither, from neither fighter. You know, it happens. Right. You know? Two things are going on. Is there excessive holding? Yes. Yeah. Has that probably contributed to Haven Brady hitting him behind the head? 100 yes. percent seen anything like this. He just gave a fighter too much that time right to hand was, from that right hand. Was flush on the chin and sends Kirill down. And then we uh, get this replay after this round of see. And look at that, yeah, a point will be taken away what? from Haven Brady in a no round warning? where he'd scored a knockout and Frank, excuse me, a knockdown and looked like he could be heading towards a knockout victory. Now has that point snatched back. Let's see what Haven Brady will do about it. I'm not in agreement with that call from the ref at all. No warning before that. I, I think Brady's going to get that point back right now. <laughs> Oh, good, good right hook by Kirill. Brady all over Kirill right now. He is fired up. We have a fight. 
Very upset. And Brady does have to be careful not to get too out of control here as well. Yes, and I've yet to, the referee has not given a, a warning for holding throughout the entire fight. Maybe the ref is a little tired. He's been refing several fights tonight. Good work. On entertaining, but absolutely bizarre round of boxing there. No, I, I don't. Very bizarre. I mean, you don't you don't take away a point if it's not intentional like that. And it was the first time. There was no warning. Yeah, first time for an intentional. Right, an intentional let's shot. take a look back at it right yeah. here. No. Come on. Holding. I think holding should have been brought to the attention first. I think the referee was more upset as when he tried to stop them. Brady threw another punch, but it barely landed, and it was momentum, I believe. Barely landed. Barely. It wasn't a hard shot at all. You still heard from the right hand prior to that. Correct. All right, round six underway. Haven Brady Jr. and Waldemir Carrill. A really messy round last time out. He lands a right hand, Cutty. All right, we're going to see if we can check in with Bozy Ennis. Hey, Bozy, you've been complaining about the holding for some rounds now. What do you think about what happened last round? All right, we'll see if we can check in with him later. I would have scored that a knockdown. Let's see. That was a knockdown. Uh, oh, okay. Will not be scored okay. a knockdown. Bozy's a little too focused right now. Understandably so. <laughs> and he oh, look at this. Oh, yeah, it, uh, he landed a shot, and from from my vantage point, it looked like a knockdown. But we'll see the replay later. Can we take a point away from from here? Because this is too much holding. Yeah. Let's take a point away from the ref. <laughs> well, another issue is the referee's got in the way a couple of times here, and I think that... I mean, he's not that agile. <laughs> you know, he's not that agile. All right, well, constant pressure by Haven. Sometimes a little too close where he's smothering his own shots, but I think Gabriel's holding has a lot to do with it. Real now. Back against the ropes, trying to work from the southpaw stands to get out of danger, but he just got clubbed with a nice left hook. Again, I need to see a little bit more body attack by Haven. <laughs> One thing we can say is that Haven is conditioned. Yes, sir. <laughs> no question. And like you said earlier, Ock, he just needs to cut off the ring. Don't just chase him, because you're getting to him quickly, but you're chasing him instead. Of, so you have to take more steps to get to him rather than cutting off the ring and take less steps, less energy, and you get there faster. Well, Carrell might be in a little bit of trouble. A couple of these left hooks Another have him hook. in a little bit of danger, and that is it. Okay. The Hitman I, finishes the job. I think that's a little makeup call from the ref. <laughs> In other words, it didn't look like it really should have been stopped. Not at the that ref point. was like, all right. Yeah. I messed up a couple of times there taking a point off. Let me end this fight. <laughs> Good, solid performance by Haven. A little messy fight, Corey, to your point. You know, a, a messy fight, but for a prospect like Haven Brady, that is also a learning experience. That was a fight that was getting out of control, that maybe his emotions could have gotten out of control, but ultimately he reined them in, his corner helped rein him in, and he got the stoppage that he was headed towards before that point deduction. Absolutely, later on in his career, he'll face fighters that are gonna be holding like that and yes, moving like that. Yes, it'll frustrate you. That adversity. I'll tell you what then, whatever road work they're putting in Bozy's gym, it's working, because every fighter that he's gone out with has not gotten tired in this fight. Let's take a look at the replay here. Yeah, I, I, I like the way Brady approached it. You know, all the time, that was the end of the stop. That was the stop. It's a little premature. Brady's obviously happy, but you didn't really see Kirill, you know, object too much because he was getting hurt with those shots. We've seen his legs wobble multiple times throughout this fight. 
A lot to like about Haven Brady. Obviously, the punch selection, the hand speed, but really the hallmark of Haven Brady, guys. There's a there's an intensity and a physicality that anyone in the ring with this man is going to have to contend with. And frankly, Haven Brady fights, they might always be a little bit messy because he's coming at you. Yeah, he I reminds mean, me of a, a Sean Porter, a, like a former a good football comparison. player that's going to maul you with punches and body placement. That's a great comparison. I think he's only going to get better in the gym in Philly, being around guys like Boots, Ennis, and, and Bozy. I think he's only going to get better every time out, but the intensity is there, and that's one of the most important things in boxing. Bozy had a good night tonight. Three victories. The contest with an official time of one minute, 59 seconds of round number six. Declaring the winner by way of TKO. Still undefeated. The Hitman, Haven Brady Jr. Brady Jr. Well, he's going to head to the pay window with an extra check. He cashed that KO bonus with a stoppage win over Waldemir Carrill. I haven't gone to distance one time tonight yet. Everybody. Yeah, one. All right, Aralia Orozco is standing by with a hitman. Congratulations. That was such an intense fight. Walk us through the key moments of this fight from your perspective. Um, he was a good opponent. Uh, he was undefeated. He never lost before. So I know he was going to be ready to come to fight. And I just stayed with my game plan with me and my team. I just broke him down. And then I, I knew I was going to finish in the later rounds. At what point during this fight did you know that you had it? Um, once he started holding, once he started holding consistently, I knew that he was hurt. And it was, it was just a matter of time before I finished him. Was there anything specific you worked on in training camp with this opponent in mind that led to tonight's success? Uh, nothing at all. I just stick with my game plan, uh, stay behind the jail, and stay comfortable and relaxed, and just have fun while I was in there and listen to my coach. Well, what's next for you? Is there any fights you're looking to get made? Anyone you want to call out? Uh, there's no one I want to call out. I just want to be, I want to be a great, a great fighter, one of the best to do it. So whatever it takes, whatever opponent it takes, and whatever opponent it takes for me to be a world champion. So I'm ready for whoever. And you had so much support in here tonight. Everyone is screaming your name. What does that mean for you? And any last words for everyone who came out to see you tonight? All your supporters. Uh, I mean everything for me. They gave me the wisdom, the power, and they gave me just the motivation to go hard. So I appreciate everybody that came out, and I love them. Thank you. I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. Back to you guys. Thank you so much, Aaliyah. Oh, Albany, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, they turned out for Haven Brady Jr. And when we're talking about prospects and who to keep your eye out on, guys, I mean, that is an element. Skill is obviously one thing. The results are one thing. But also, can you sell tickets? Do you draw some eyeballs? And Haven Brady is starting to build that kind of following. Yes, he is. And you know what? That's the first time I heard that question answered and I wasn't upset. And that's, who would you like to call out? And he said, no one. He said, I want to become a great fighter. I like that response. Absolutely, yeah. Well, usually the response is, I'll let my team decide. Yeah, yeah. You know, they kind of step aside. And I usually don't like that. Absolutely. <laughs> That's the worst generic one. <laughs> All right, let's take a look back at some of the highlights from this one. It was messy at times, guys, but we still saw what is potentially great about Haven Brady Jr. Right. They, they mixed it up a lot. That was two double left hooks by Brady. Going to the body, going straight up with the jab that was good. And that right hand was nice. One of the things that I saw in, in Brady that I like, a lot of these young fighters often like to do too much showboating. He kept his hands up throughout that entire fight. Those are basic fundamentals that I like to see in a young fighter. See, and looking at, oh, that's the stoppage right there. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the final punch stats, courtesy of CompuBox. Uh, there were a lot of holds. We won't have those tabulated for us, but you see 102 punches landed by Haven Brady Jr., just 26 from Waldemar Carrill. So when we assess that stoppage, guys, again, we talked about the negativity in the body language, the movement of Waldemar Carrill. And again, looking at these numbers, this is a guy who, while it was intense at times, just wasn't in this fight. 
Wow, I didn't I didn't realize he only landed 26 punches. I mean, he threw two, over 250 punches and maybe 250 holds as well. <laughs> All right, well, our main event is coming up next, but right now we're gonna take a quick break, but come on back. Our main event coming up next from here in Atlanta. We had great fights with them, no doubt. We need to fight. Hey, we're good fighters, let's fight. Live on DAZN Worldwide, April 20th, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. These two have been going back and forth since the amateur days. Two generational talents, the world at their feet. Let's make the fight happen now. This one is going to be a grudge match. Set to ignite. Devin the Dream Haney, living the dream. Multiple world champion, undefeated. I am the man. It's time for me to ensure the world how great I really am. Brian Garcia, lightning fast, explosive, unmissable, going all in. This is the year I shot the world. A world championship is on the line, but only one can wear the crown. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation. I'm telling you, it's special. This one Alice. Live on the Zone Worldwide, April 20th. You want some real fight? You can fight me. C4. Hello? <laughs> because before you know it, it's another day and you gotta be ready to go. So let's go! What's going on, Fight Fans? It's your boy, Ock. And I'm Barack, the Boxing Bully. We're in this recording studio for a reason. Apparently, Elijah Pierce raps. He says he can rap. We're about to find out right now. Barack is a harsh critic. You know how them Brooklyn boys do. We put you to the test. Let's go. Whoa. Okay, you getting your verse together? What's going on? We're going to talk boxing, but we're going to rap, man. I'm a natural born entertainer. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. For sure. My father, he was a singer. He used to sing in the nightclubs, all that. Mom, she was a dancer. So she could dance. You do have children, right? Yes, I have a daughter. How old is she? Seven. Does she have any uh, talent out of, in her blood? Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm starting to train a little bit. I can see she got a little natural aptitude, you oh, know, for boxing a little bit, but she dances too. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, That's she loves amazing. to dance. So it's just kind of like we musically inclined. But most people that do that type of entertainment don't want to get punched in the face, right? How do you end up boxing? I was a huge fan of Blade and Michael J. White. Like, those right. two were like my childhood idols growing up. What was funny is that everybody said my dad looked like Blade. Don't tell me he had the flat top. Yes, he had the, yeah, he had oh, the no. same cut every time. Uh, so, uh, like, dead serious, like, everybody used to say my dad looked like Blade. So, he was a martial artist. And so, he transitioned into boxing in the early 2000s. Like, it just kind of made me that much more interested. Yo, you know how sometimes some of my thoughts and my memories are based upon what music was out at that time? Is there a song out there for you that is just so important in your life because of what you was going through at the time? It would be Mary J. Really? What's up? Mary J touching all the brothers. <laughs> yeah, my life, that, that, that joint is like one See of what my I'm favorite. saying? I'm not favorite. the only one. You got an old soul. Now, yeah. is your rap name Wolf as well? No, no, it's just my name. I just love my name. So, so where did the wolf come from? Well, I spelled it W Triple X L F. The the Triple X stands for unpredictability. I don't know if y'all ever seen like the bottles of Chemical X. You know what I'm saying? You don't know yeah. the ingredients or not. You know, it's kind of like that's where I kind of based it off of. It's like you never know what you're gonna get when you step in the ring with Elijah Pierce. You know, I can beat you a number, a multitude of different ways. I can, mm. I can box you, I can bang with you, I can angle fight you, I can counter punch you. You know, King Arthur, he gonna have to deal with me and my soldiers. Mm. And at the end of the day, you know, the wolf pack, we always come and the hunt continues. All right, guys, so we'll get into Elijah Pierce, the fighter, in just a second. But how do you rate the Wolf's bars, first of all? Well, I don't want to compare. Well, if I compare him to me, then I don't know. But, no, he did his thing. I, I appreciated his lyrics. Definitely a decent rap. You know, Barack is a little bit more experienced. He's battle-tested. <laughs> I'm from New York. <laughs> Come on. Well, 
Well, listen, I can rap. I will say he's borrowing from the hip hop game in terms of that trash talk. I mean, it, as as much noise as he made with his knockout win here at overtime last summer, he's been making a lot of noise online. And there are some people that weren't familiar with him that frankly are right now because he's been doing the talking. Yeah, I mean, like we said earlier, look, obviously he's using that footage of, of him against Tech very well, right? It's gone viral. He says he didn't put it out to brag. He was proud that at that age he was able to hold his own against a great fighter like Tech. He was more so proud, but now that Tech is responding to him, is serving him well. And then also, you know, bringing out a gift at the weigh-in, you know, creativity, King Arthur pulling the sword out of the stone. That shows that the boy has a lot of showmanship and, he, and he's bound to be a star if he keeps winning. So obviously he's been bringing up Tank Davis's name. He's also been bringing up Inouye's name as well. I mean, he is taking, uh, he's targeting some of the most dangerous fighters in the sport. Probably the two most dangerous fighters outside of Terrence Crawford and Canelo Alvarez. I mean, very dangerous fighters, but you know, at this point in his career, with the amount of fights he has and what he has shown, he's doing the right thing. He's calling out, disrupting, ruffling feathers so he can get a big fight. Well, right. we have an opportunity to prove exactly where he's at here tonight as he takes on Arthur Villanueva, the multi-time world title challenger, as we take a look at the tail of the tape for our main event. Elijah Pierce and King Arthur Villanueva. Super bantamweight action. You see the 35-year-old Arthur Villanueva giving up quite a bit in terms of height and reach in this one. We've heard Elijah Pierce promising an early stoppage in our main event. So with that, let's take a closer look once again at our main event fighters. We welcome our final bout of the evening, entering the arena, Arthur Villanueva. Well, Arthur Villanueva is one of 12 children in his family. His father passed away when he was just 15 years of age, and he knew that he needed to step up. To help his family, he started driving a delivery tricycle, which netted him about 100 pesos, or around $2.50 US per day. But then, he embarked upon his pro boxing journey, which has seen him challenge for a world title three times officially. Might as well have been four, because he challenged Luis Neri when he was still holding a world title. He was unsuccessful in all of those challenges, but a win here tonight would put him in a conversation for yet another big fight. Well, uh His counterpart. Elijah Pierce.
Elijah Pierce, one of the breakout stars of the overtime series last summer, returns to the very place where, frankly, guys, his life and career changed. Pierce was kind of on the outside looking in, a fighter without a promoter who had the skills. We knew that he could talk a good game, but was waiting for an opportunity like this. And because of overtime, Elijah Pierce has suddenly been in the headlines over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, he was at a point where he was going to quit boxing. Yes. He called his father crying. He thought it was the end of the road, but this resurgence right now has this crowd lit in here. People are ready to see what he's going to do next. We continue on boxing's newest proving ground, OTE Arena, Atlanta, Georgia. This bout, eight round super bantamweight division. It is the return of OTX Friday Night Fights, powered by C4 Energy. Our officials at ringside scoring this bout. Nola Oliver, Eric Gilbert, and Ed Canner. At the sound of the bell, the man in charge of the ring, referee Malik Waleed. And now, ladies and gentlemen, prepare to be entertained. The OTX main event starts now. Presenting first, the fighter in the blue corner. He enters the ring wearing blue with white and gold trim. He weighed in officially at 122 and three quarter pounds. Tonight, this two time world title challenger enters the OTX ring in his 41st professional bout with 35 victories against four losses, one bout even, 20 of those victories coming by way of KO. From Bago City, the Philippines, King Arthur Villanueva. His opposition in the red corner, wearing black with neon green and purple trim. He weighed in officially at 121 and three quarter pounds. Tonight, this ultimate showman and world rank contender returns to the OTX ring in his 21st professional bout with an outstanding record of 18 victories against only two losses, 15 of those victories coming by way of knockout. Hailing from Midwest City, Oklahoma, and now ripping the ATL Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, gentlemen, I'm expecting good, clean boxing. When I say break, stop punching, take a full step back, protect yourselves at all times. Look like you're a little high, Michael. Okay, touch them up. Good luck to you both. It is time for our main event. Can Elijah Pierce turn in another head-turning performance here at the OTE Arena like he did against Mike Plania last time out? Or can another Filipino fighter in Arthur Villanueva spring the upset here tonight? Round one, scheduled for eight. Okay, so he has uh, two minutes and 47 seconds left to see if he can get that knockout. And I'm talking about Pierce. And it's funny, Villanueva, one of his favorite fighters is Tito Trinidad from Puerto Rico. He talked about loving his style. Look, uh, Pierce has his work cut out for him today. You know, we spoke about Inouye, you know, as the possible opponent for Pierce, but Villanueva spends some time with Inouye sparring him. Yeah. A straight oh. left hand there from Pierce. Ring Magazine's number nine rated. 122 pounder in the world. Pierce very much one of the 10 best on the planet in his weight class. Ooh, good defense by Pierce. Good oh, body shot work. to the body there from Pierce. Big left hand. Pierce. Looks like he might really bringing the pressure here in the opening round. Great. Living up to that promise. Whether he gets it or not, well, that's another story, but Pierce. Behaving like a fighter 
who thinks that he can indeed get his opponent out of there early. Well, he's about halfway through the round, and we'll see if he can execute. Look, the end of a guy with 40 fights, been in there with so many. Barack, you mentioned Inouye. You talked about the South African fighter that is. Uh oh. A little capoeira in there <laughs> by Pierce. The fighter you oh, just referenced fighter. there is Zolani Tete. Yeah, he said that was the best fighter he's ever been in. Yes. One of the three official world title fights that Villanueva has been involved in. Good, good, good left hand. Nice left hand over the top. Run him quick, run him I mean, quick. Pierce's defense is on point and he's beating Villanueva to, to the point every time. Really sinks that right hand to the body, does Pierce. You can hear that one. Careful with that left hook, the where I just landed there. I think Pierce is there. finished with being slick. He's like, he felt his shots and said, you know what, I'm going to walk you down, and I'm going to try and get up, get you out of there. Well, oh, we talked about the fighters up. punching themselves out early, so we, we don't want to see that from Pierce. Get your rhythm. Get your rhythm. Oh, nice. Nice right hand by Villanueva. Yeah, he could be dangerous with that shot, Barack. We saw a lot of knockouts from Villanueva on his way up. On those Pinoy Power pay-per-views on Box Azteca. Sort of a lot of highlight reel knockouts. And you have to think that that power hasn't fully left him, even at 35 years of age. Just Here love. seems like the stronger fighter. Yeah, and I just love the way he's defensive-minded, even though he's pushing Villanueva back. Yeah. Looks like he filled in well after the win. Oh, oh yeah. Villanueva landed a few good body shots in that first round, but obviously Pierce controlled the round. Responded with a good right hand to the body and a, and a good check right hook. Oh, Pierce well, coming out balance. firing here. You see Villanueva thinking maybe he has an opportunity to capitalize. A nice pivot there from Pierce, turning the table, and now a nice chopping left hand. Good action to start off round two. It's a war in Atlanta. But when you start letting your hands go, you're in the line of fire, so he's also. Landed a big shot there, Villanueva. Good one, oh, man. nice shot oh, no. from Villanueva, and Pierce is in serious trouble. Villanueva sends him nearly through the ropes. Wow. And right before that, his corner told Pierce he wants to make it a fight. Box him. This is surprising. This is boxing for you folks. That's right. We may be on the verge of an absolute shocker here in Atlanta. Elijah Pierce calling out the best fighters in the world. Still but two he minutes has left. Arthur Villanueva to worry about right now. That's what she should be doing right now, holding on, getting his composure back. Is this a little less than two minutes left in this round. And you got a fresh fighter in Villanueva with a her fighter in front of him in Pierce. Villanueva looking for another one of those big right hands. That one scrapes the face of Elijah Pierce, who's trying to get his bearings, but he is not all the way there right now. No, he's trying to land a big shot and surprise Villanueva coming in. And you see Lorenzo Parra sitting ringside, the expected next opponent of Elijah Pierce, but who knows, he might be facing Arthur Villanueva next. It's a great point, Corey. At this point, we don't know where this fight is going. It seems like he's getting his wits back. See a little bounce in the step of Elijah Pierce. Yeah, but we would see more head movement, so it's not back totally yet. I think we need a little more clinching, holding, just good Ooh. body work. I think Villanueva is letting him off the hook a little bit, just not punching enough. 
Mears trying to turn the tables here in round two. Couple hard body shots from Pierce in the midst of this onslaught from Villanueva. He has to keep that chin down and move that head in those exchanges. Villanueva has taken advantage of this round. I think Villanueva trying to be cognizant not to punch himself out as well. Yes. Little blood from the nose of Pierce. Now Pierce is back on his toes. And that's probably the smartest thing to do, just to gain your composure. Dance around the ring, throw your jabs. Final 10 seconds of a shocking second round. Arthur Villanueva sending Elijah Pierce to the canvas. Gets out of this round. Very scary round for Elijah Pierce. He's definitely the slicker boxer, but defensively made a big mistake and got caught with that right hand. All right, let's see how he set it up now. Villanueva missed with the with the left hand, oh, but he caught him with caught him with the right hand twice, uh, right on the temple. Messes up the equilibrium and down went Pierce. Yeah, but before that, the right hand that hurt him it was in an almost that we haven't seen yet. Almost in the lap of a judge. <laughs> almost. Almost kicked a card out of her hand. And like I said before, his, his father was telling him, box him. Well, the corner of Arthur Villanueva was absolutely losing it, telling their fighter to go get him, go finish this fight. Yes. Elijah Pierce coming out firing here in round three. With his hands up this time. <laughs> Smart decision. Pierce trying to get to the inside to work the body. Let's trying go. to slow Villanueva down, but he has to be careful. Because that right hand that we alluded to earlier in this fight, yeah, it's as dangerous as it ever was. Absolutely. You know, Elijah Pierce told us that he is the face of OTX. He's going to have to turn this fight around big time in order to prove that. Ain't nothing like a redemption story. Facing adversity and coming back. Absolutely. But let's see if Villanueva will let him shot from Pierce a moment ago. Pierce is still the faster, quicker, twitchier fighter. Ooh. Beautiful right hook from Elijah Pierce. Uh, Brother Winneva took that very well. Good shots by Pierce there. Good exchange. Right hook by Pierce. Sometimes a knockdown wakes you up, guys. Looks like a little bit of swelling starting to develop outside the left eye of Arthur Villanueva, maybe from one of those oh, right hooks. Good left hooks. hand by Pierce. And another one. He's put his punches together very well right now, Corey. Pierce is not being cautious at all here. He's trying to get that knockdown back and more. But he's still being defensive in those exchanges, using his shoulder roll, keeping his hands up. He's being smart right now. Smart attack. Pierce is winding up with that body shot a moment ago. I like the body attack by Pierce. Seems like Villanueva was taking some time off. Yeah, Villanueva standing still for a moment here. You have to wonder if those body shots have already taken their effect. But again, you got to be careful. Those ambushes, those explosions from Villanueva with the right hand, they can still be dangerous. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think he's just paying possum. You know, I, I think Pierce is hitting, sitting down on his shots, landing hard shots, but it's not really affecting him upstairs. That's why he needs to go, continue to go downstairs, Barack. And he needs to box him. He, he doesn't have to stand inside and trade. Box him, soften him up a little bit before you start doing this. If you see that he can take your hardest shots. You gotta remember, this guy's been in there with some of the best fighters in the world in sparring. So much experience from that Villanueva team. This, this, this body work from Pierce this round has been absolutely brutal, and it might have changed the momentum of this fight. Yes, indeed. Putting the combinations together, he has to be very careful. Villanueva still possesses power. 20 knockouts out of his 35 fights. 35 wins. Right, what a bounce back round for the Wolf, Elijah Pierce. Wow. Great comeback round. 
One thing we... Here goes the combination right there. Right uppercut, right hook. Oh, good left uppercut by Pierce. Nice body shot followed by... He walked him down. I mean... Yeah, he walked him down. All right, so here's Lorenzo Parra sitting ringside. Some additional context here. We mentioned Parra, the expected next opponent for Elijah Pierce. He signed a contract to face Pierce at OTX 8. Lorenzo Parra, also the only fighter to have ever gone to an overtime round. It was victorious in our first iteration of overtime boxing. You see the look on his face. <laughs> the one thing so far we've seen, Corey, is that Villanueva can hurt Pierce, but Pierce has not been able to hurt Villanueva yet. Well, we haven't seen Villanueva you know, overtly hurt, but I think we definitely saw Villanueva slow down in that round. I think we saw the impact of those body shots, and we're seeing the swelling around the eye of Villanueva intensify as well. A absolutely. Great body attack last round by Pierce, and he's obviously landing that right hook. Big right there hook there from Pierce. I think that hurt Villanueva slightly. I don't, I don't oh, think nice so. Pivot there the... from Pierce. A nice right hook. I mean, he's I mean, shifting still him. Fresh, the, shot, the shots are so hard, he's shifting Villanueva, but I don't see him hurt. I don't, I don't see his knees buckling yet. Yeah, he's not hurt, hurt the way Pierce was. But Pierce right now is controlling his fight. He needs to be very careful. He knows that right hand can hurt him. And what he's doing now is angles. Staying out of the way of Villanueva's shots and landing his shots very harshly. This is a very good fight, fellas. Competitive. Action pack main event here in Atlanta, Georgia. Elijah Pierce now making his fighting home here in Atlanta. Great left hand. A lot at stake, Corey, like, as you said. He has a Shot pressure. The body from Villanueva a moment ago, but Pierce gets it right back with a beautiful uppercut downstairs. You know, Pierce is showing that he can dominate from the outside with the, the double jab straight left and on the inside. Like that. Definitely the more skilled fighter here, but this is a very competitive fight. Elijah has a fight waiting for him in OT. Oh, oh, three good shots from Villanueva. Pierce's corner warning him, keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Pierce can't get the place in here, even though he's been doing the bulk of the work for the last two rounds. If he keeps landing that right jab and right hook, he's going to shut Villanueva's eye completely in the next two rounds. It's almost there. Nice left hand down the middle. Oh. And down goes okay. That answers that question. Can Pierce <laughs> hurt Villanueva? Yes. The tables have turned here in the main event. Both men trading knockdowns. But you wonder if the pendulum has now swung permanently in the favor of Elijah Pierce, who's looking to end this one in the fourth round. And Villanueva still swinging back in the face of adversity. But I think this fight ends here, folks. Villanueva just getting busted up right now. He might get out of this round. Ten seconds left. Pierce all over Villanueva. Oh, it's a it's race over. against the it's clock. Over. And it's he over. will win it. The Wolves Spe captures his prey in the main event. Spectacular knockout by Elijah Pierce. I think he closed the show. I think he pierced the armor of King Arthur. That's what he did. Well played. Well done. Came back from off the canvas. Stop this man. Beautiful respect right there between the two fighters. We love to see that sportsmanship. Well, that was a four-round war. Oh. You could not ask for more than that. Drama here in Atlanta at OTX5. Atlanta, are we not entertained? <laughs> Everybody seems like they got their money's worth tonight. <laughs> Elijah Pierce with absolutely everything hanging in the balance. Had to muster up the courage and the heart to do this. A come from behind, a comeback knockout victory. Check it out. Great fit.
finish for the Wolf. Oh! Oh! That right hook right there was just awesome. Perfectly placed on the temple. Strong right uppercut and just a barrage of punches and a couple of them landed flush and the referee said that's it. He's trying to say, what you saying now? Do you think he earned a shot with Inouye? Or do we need to see a couple more fights? I mean, listen, in Inouye is imminently busy with Luis Neri. And there are a lot of good fighters at 122. And Elijah Pierce, he has a date with Lorenzo Parra first. But this is just a continuation, I would think, of the buzz that Elijah Pierce is building. And this is one of those wins, guys, that one way or another gets people talking. This is an exciting win. There will be people who will say, hey, he got knocked down by Arthur Villanueva. There will be people on the other side of that saying, yeah, but look what he did. Look how he reacted to that. And that's what you want as a young fighter coming up, wanting big fights. You need your, your name to be circulating. In conversation. Exactly. So what's going through Pyro's mind right now? <laughs> I mean... He's probably thinking at this point, hey, this is a fighter that can't be hurt. That's I've seen him knock down. That's exactly what he's thinking. But he's also saying that I saw a dog in there. <laughs> exactly. Yes. I uh, saw a wolf in there. I mean, can we fast forward to OTX 8? Let's just, let's just <laughs> get this skip fight going. Back to six. <laughs> <laughs> what a victory for Elijah Pierce. A thrilling, dramatic main event in just four rounds, but the wolf pulls it out, gets off the canvas to stop King Arthur Villanueva. And the man who declared himself the face of OTX Boxing. Keeping that knockout ratio high. And he can keep a smile on his face as well here tonight. <laughs> Inside the OTX ring, referee Malik Walid steps in and calls a halt to the action with an official time of 2 minutes 57 seconds of the fourth round, declaring the winner by way of technical knockout, repping the ATL. who is standing by with our Alia Roscoe. Hello, congratulations. I am here with the winner, the Wolf, Elijah Pierce. Congratulations on your win. How would you rate your performance tonight? It wasn't my best, but at the same time, I'm grateful and I'm thankful for the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? This, this is what champions are made of. No matter how hard you get hit, man, if you get knocked,
Allen, uh, Chris Allen. So, of course, you know, condolences to his family. And, you know, I'm just happy to put on. And this guy right here, if you want to get it next, I'll gladly. We'll definitely break some censorship okay, laws. We'll so we'll leave that, that one alone. Only said something about eggs. Let's, let's summarize. <laughs> he invited him to places that we can't talk about okay. on the air. Okay. All right. Yeah, we, we will not do that. But we know that we're going to be back here in Atlanta for that fight. OTX8. We cannot wait for that one. Elijah Pierce, what a victory here tonight. A stunning knockout victory over Arthur Villanueva. Let's take a look tonight's full fight highlights presented by c4 energy energy that hits and a reminder as you're watching these don't forget to vote on your favorite fight on instagram head over to at overtime boxing on ig uh tough to vote against this man guys oh uh, obviously the fight of the night c4 fighter night is going to be oh this fight right here where elijah pierce almost went out of the ring got back up Third round took over the fight. Fourth round stopped this man. And what's impressive that there was a lot left in that round, Corey, oh. when he was hurt. And he was able to survive the entire round with smart boxing, clinching, holding, and moving his head. This was the last onslaught right here. And that right uppercut sealed the deal. Referee said it's over. Right at the end of the round. Yeah, Pierce just never stopped believing in his power. And I think guys did the right thing by targeting the body and slowing down Villanueva. And... At a certain point, he realized it was the right hand that he had to worry about. If he could nullify that right hand, if he could slow Villanueva down a little bit, he could eventually get that back. And that's exactly what happened. Yes. 100%. I mean, I'm excited about what's next. I'm surprised to see Paro get in the ring like that. That's a little bit out of character, but, but that's what happens at OTX5, I guess. And, you know, say what you want about the drama about him going down, but that's excitement. That's what these fans are here for, excitement. People want to see him in the ring again. Well, right. We had lots of excitement from bottom to top on the card here tonight as we take a look at the fight highlights from the entire night. The fight of the night highlights, once again, presented to you by C4 Energy. Energy, that hits. And remember, log on to IG at Overtime Boxing and vote for your favorite fight. What a night it was, guys. Quickly, other than Elijah Pierce, who is your MVP of the night? I would have to say that woman right there, <laughs> O'Shea, <laughs> because, you know, yes, it was a rematch. She she knew how to beat the girl already in her debut uh, bout, but she came back and stopped the woman that's never been stopped. Um, for me, I thought I was very impressed with Dante Lane to his performance. This was an incredible night. Five knockouts and six bouts. And even the, the bout with Marquez was very competitive and fun. Well, as Aaliyah told us off the top of the broadcast, the innovations from overtime boxing meant to induce more action, and we certainly saw that. This 18 by 18 ring, guys, there's just nowhere to run. I mean, so, look, it, it's safe to say that that bonus knockout is working. These people are going out there to put knockouts, to give knockouts for the fans. 
It's one of the best things implemented in boxing in a very long time. I mean, when you tell us, when you tell Akam Barak that you're going to get the guy out in the first round, <laughs> that's enough pressure right there. That's bigger than a bonus round. For but sure. well, well played by Elijah Pierce. All right, guys. Well, we're feeling the pressure to get back there to the VIP, so it's time to wrap things up. It was an exciting night all night long here in Atlanta, Georgia, for my broadcast colleagues, Ak, Barak, Aliyah Orozco, Overtime Tom, and all the wonderful people back in the truck. I'm Corey Erdman saying so long, and we'll see you at the fights. Hey champ, I know why you're here. You're a born winner, the top dog. You have a proper punch on you. It only takes one, eh? But I know you're not all about throwing haymakers. You know your bobs from your weaves, and you know the zone's got over 100 live effects every year. Over 100. Proper stack. All the action, the chaos, the comebacks, the non-stop knockout. Big fights every week. So get those gloves back on. Together, we're boxing royalty. The zone, undisputed.